home win streak at 58. And with that victory, he escapes the long shadow cast by the legendary coach Don James to firmly establish the new era of Jim Lambright football for the Huskies as they come on the field here at Husky Stadium in Seattle. ABC Sports College Football presents a Pac-10 matchup featuring the Bruins of UCLA and the Huskies of the University of Washington. And hi, everybody. I'm Roger Twivel, and we welcome you here to Seattle. The win last week was also a huge confidence builder for junior quarterback Damon Hewitt. He really stepped it up a notch in the second half against the Hurricanes. He needs to continue to play at that level and to improve on that as the season goes on. Meanwhile, with the Heisman watch, Napoleon Kaufman has moved to the forefront. He's going to touch the ball 30 to 35 times today. He's going to be featured in a big way. And the Bruins of UCLA are struggling at the moment. Working with me is Todd Blackledge. He's not here right now, but he's somewhere here in the stadium. Todd? Roger, I'm still down here in the film room, a place I used to spend a lot of time as a quarterback and a place where I'm sure Wayne Cook spent a lot of time this week watching this very fast and very aggressive Washington defense. Now, the Husky philosophy is to constantly crowd the line of scrimmage with seven or eight people in order to attack the running game, and then if you throw, to be able to bring a lot of pressure on the quarterback from all different directions. Now, what Cook has to realize is that in order to play this kind of defense, you're taking some chances because it's a lot of tight man-to-man -man coverage all over the field. If you can pass protect a little bit, there are opportunities for big plays. Case in point, last year when these two teams played, Cook threw for nearly 300 yards and a career-high four touchdown passes. One problem, it's a lot easier to plan the strategy in here in the film room than out on the AstroTurf in front of 70,000. Roger? Thanks, Todd. Well, we've got the former quarterback nice and dry here in the booth and the former linebackers down on the sidelines. We're going to check in with Gary Reason and the Bruins in just a moment. Brewing Washington as an underdog. They're losing three of their starting offensive linemen and perhaps their best offensive player in J.J. Stokes. He didn't even make the trip. Yesterday out here at practice, Coach Donahue gave his team a history lesson. In 1990, they came here as a three-touchdown underdog, and they overcame the Huskies. Today, they're two two-touchdowns down, and today, just a minute ago, out of the tunnel, I talked with Coach Donahue. He told his team that they're just one play away. No matter how good it is, you're only one play away from being bad, and however how bad it is, you're one play away from being good. Roger, let's kick it off. Okay, Gary, thank you very much. As you take a look at Husky Stadium here in Seattle, not the same view that uh, Gary used to have at the Meadowlands in New Jersey when he was playing for the Giants. As we get set to go, Washington won the toss to third, so UCLA will receive John Wales to kick it off for the Huskies. And Derek Ayers and Jim McElroy. Back deep, and that's Ayers, 25, with a hole on the right side. All the way up to the 49-yard line. Beautiful job right there by Derek Ayers, the sophomore from Compton. As you take a look at Wayne Cook from Newberry Park, California. Three touchdowns, five interceptions. And the offensive line for the Bruins, and this is where they've really been hurt. Missing in action, you see Christensen, Singson, and Kennedy. They are all out. Ogden and Flanagan remain, but the replacements. Sauter's making his first start. Rome at right guard, and Overhauser at right tackle. Those are two red shirt freshmen and a junior. First and ten after that return of 42 yards by Derek Ayers. Ball almost at midfield. Shaw's 33, finds the left side, and running upright, Shaw will get it down to the 46-yard line where Ink Aliaga will come up a meeting from the inside Jamal linebacker Shaw position and Lawyer Malloy. There you see Shaw, 33. Milliner's banged up a bit, number 36. Jordan, Mike Wynn, and Brian Richards, a tight end, and we should see some of Skip Hicks today. He is suited up. He is ready to play with the coaching staff. So decides to use him. Coming off that surgery just six months ago for a torn anterior cruciate ligament. On second down, they go to Shaw again. Makes a lot of things happen inside. He's close to the first down at the 41-yard line where Aliaga and Malloy, once again, are both in there on the tackle. Defensively for the Huskies, and they feature speed with Deke Deavers, 43, Hoffman, 91, and Ibalico, 88. Schmidt, Aliaga, Kilpatrick, and Chambers. The seven men up front on third down and less than a yard. Milliner right up the middle. 
And he gets inside the 40 to the 39, and that will be enough for the first down. Good call there on the third and short. Go with the fullback. This defense of Washington, a very quick and aggressive defense. Kind of best to attack him, hitting right at him, going very quickly, giving it to the up back. Good defensive backfield for Washington. Harrison, Lyons, Malloy, and maybe Reeser's playing the best of all of them right now. Yeah, Reeser and Harrison, two excellent man-to-man -man cover guys, and they depend on their corners a lot with the style of defense they like to play. First and 10, 39-yard line. This could be a big confidence builder for UCLA as Shaw has it on the left side. Turns it up. Shaw's a tough little back as he gets down to the 32-yard line, and Lawyer Malloy once again on a tackle. Sharmon Shaw, the sophomore from L.A. Take a look at Richie Chambers now, number 32. He's a big play guy. He was away from the play here. Never really gets into it. The lineman, the tight end got into his body. Never really got to use his speed and chase the play down. And a nice job just cutting him off, running away from him on the play. Chambers has great speed and ability to chase down plays. But if you can get into his body, it slows him down quite a bit. Second down and three. Charmon Shaw averaging 5.8 yards per carry so far in the year. As Cook checking off at the line of screen. On second down, Shaw gets it once again. Cuts it up, and he's got the first down inside the 30, down to the 28. And they're running behind big 6'8", 315-pound Jonathan Ogden on the left side. Yeah, they're doing a nice job running just kind of a stretch play, too. They're allowing Shaw to just kind of stretch it. They're doing a good job keeping the penetration down to a minimum at the point of attack and allowing Shaw to just, when he sees a crease, make the quick cut inside. Everybody talks about Napoleon Kaufman and his ability to make the quick cuts and that kind of make you miss runner. Charmin Shaw, not too bad himself. First and 10, ball at the 28. Shaw's a lone setback. And he'll get it one more time trying the right side and nothing going there. He might have been dropped for about a one-yard loss as Richie Chambers, 32, the weak side backer, came up to make the tackle. Well, he's a big-time player. He's got five-and-a-half sacks on the year, a couple tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Watch his pursuit angle straight down the line. Once he sees where the ball carrier is going, he was no wasted motion back in the backfield. He made a beeline right for the tailback, came straight down the line of scrimmage to make the tackle behind the action. Hey, Todd, I guess they'll keep it on the left side from now on. Huh? <laughs> Don't run away from him. Run at him if you can. Second and 11. Cook will roll to the near side. Got a man open. And the ball is thrown low at the 16-yard line. Mike Wynn was the intended receiver over on the near side. You know, the, the Bruins have had a lot of success up here in Seattle. This is just the second game they played here in the 90s. But the last time they visited, back on November 10th, 1990, UCLA as Gary mentioned, a three-touchdown underdog in that game, upset the number two-ranked Huskies, who if they could have won that game, would have probably moved up to number one, 25-22, on a cold, rainy afternoon similar to this. And, you know, UCLA's won two, the last two and four of the last five, so they've had some success in the series, and Washington hasn't beaten UCLA here at Husky Stadium since 1985, on third down and 11 out of the shotgun. Cook looking right, now sees some room to run it, and he dives down to the 22-yard line. It's going to be about four yards short where Mike Ivalico, number 88, was there holding his position and able to make the tackle. And that's going to set up a fourth down and five in a field goal situation. And there is a young man, number 37, Bjorn Merton, an All-America a year ago. But he has struggled a bit of late. He has missed four of his last five. He'll spot it down right at the 30, so make it a 40-yard field goal. And so far this year, he is three out of six. And he has had to attempt a lot of long field goals this year yeah. because the Bruin offense has sputtered. And a lot of attempts, six of them already, over 40 yards. And he only had four or five, I believe, in 12 games last year. Kevin Walker's the holder. And that is no good. So Merton's troubles continue. Wide to the left, and 11.29 to go first quarter from Seattle. No score between UCLA and Washington. You know, we mentioned Bjorn Merton was an All-American last year as a freshman, but I'll tell you what, kicking is more mental than it is physical. Watch the reaction after the missed kick. Obviously, this is a kid that's struggling, and he's just psychologically has got to find a way to get himself out of this rut, Roger. Well, Merton uh, last year competed with a young man named Jason Leslie, who has since transferred to Colorado. And Leslie said, I pushed him every day in practice as Hewart looks deep on first down. 
and the intended receiver Eric Bjornsson and broken up back there by Teddy Lawrence. Uh, folks, Teddy Lawrence is five foot nine, 187 pounds, and Bjornsson six foot five. Trying to take advantage of that mismatch in size, Todd. Yeah, they tried to get it to the tall receiver, but watch where this ball is going to be thrown. Now, when Bjornsson makes the cut, the ball has to go away from the defender. Throw it more towards the middle of the field. When he throws it back over the left shoulder, that allows Lawrence to kind of get a bead on the ball and come in and make a nice play. When you've got the defender in that position, throw it away from him. Let your guy run to the ball and away from the defender. Second down and 10. Ball at the 23-yard line. David Hewitt, the quarterback, and gives it to that man the number eight. Napoleon Kaufman and nothing going on the right side. There's a look at Hewitt, who really stepped it up a notch last week. Uh, newfound confidence, I think, in himself and the coaching staff. Really impressed with his toughness and determination in the second half. There's the offensive line. Peterson's the big man at 310 pounds. Highfield Garcia, tough center. Patrick Kessie and Eric Battle, number 70. And the backs, Bjornsson, Thomas, Kaufman, Bruner, the tight end, and Dave Janoski, number 19, the flanker. A loss of two on that last play. So far, the Huskies on third down this year have completed 37% of their third down attempts. That's third in the Pac-10. And the blitz by Edwards and pulled down. Inside the 10-yard line, Donnie Edwards came busted through, and he gets yet another sack. That's his seventh sack this year. You know, that's a great disguised defense by UCLA. They showed blitz to the tight end side where Bruner was lined up, and that caused Hewitt to be more concerned with what was on his right. Then they brought the blitz to his backside, brought it from the left, really fooled him. A nice job disguising that defense and slipping Donnie Edwards in there for the sack. Jeff Prince will have to punt it on a fourth down and 22. And Paul Gittry standing back at midfield to return the punt. It's a line drive kick. But Gittry takes it to 45, and he is hit immediately. Down there in a hurry for the Huskies' number 10 on the coverage, Scott Greenlaw. And also Troy Parrish, number 7. A timeout on the field, 9.56 to go first quarter. on ABC Sports brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. Kellogg's with good taste, nutrition, and value, the best to you each morning from Kellogg's. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Aptiva, it's whatever you want, however, whenever, why ever you want, it's the newest mobile media PC from IBM. Roger Twible, Todd Blackledge, Gary Reasons here with you. You know, last week UCLA blanked 21 nothing by Washington State. Only the second time in the last 23 years they were shut out. Todd, poor field position offensively for them. Well, and then early in the game they caught a couple good dry or good situations where they had the ball inside the Washington State territory, could not convert. One result in a punt, a fumble, and an interception. Here in this ball game today, again, when you're an underdog, you've got to take advantage of good field situation. They had a pretty nice drive their first. First time, missed the field goal. Here again, they're right around the 50. They've got to get some points on the board in this drop. That was Darren Washington, number 30, the ball carrier. And he got two, so it's second down and eight as they go to the lone setback with Josh Eby, the redshirt freshman from San Diego, coming in. Cook got his tight end. Ryan Richards down to the 30-yard line. And let's send you to New York and John Saunders. John, how you doing? Keep you updated on that game as Brian Richards makes his first reception of the year. As UCLA has it first and ten at the 30-yard line. Shaw slipping a bit. Gets about one. Steve Hoffman, 91. Defensive end over there. The big man from San Jose at 6'6 and 260. Making the tackle. Hoffman's brother, of course, was a real good player here for the Huskies. If UCLA can continue to get some production out of their running game as they have so far in this first quarter, it's going to make those bootlegs and the play actions all that more effective. Anything you can do to kind of keep this defense a little bit on their heels is uh, really going to work in your favor. On second and nine, Cook wants a throw. On the move and overthrown the intended receiver, his leading receiver, Kevin Jordan, number four. 
And it looks as though, Todd, they're not going to leave Cook as a stationary target right. back there. They're going to make him move all over the place. Yeah, that was a design scramble where they were going to move the pocket. And that's that's smart thinking, too. Don't let them get zeroed in on where he's going to be every time. Watch the attention they're paying to Jordan. Zone defense, a lot of times Washington plays man, but they were expecting Cook to try to get the ball to Jordan that time. A little soft zone, really no place for the quarterback to go with the football. On third down and nine, Cook will work out of the shotgun. He's completed 59% of his passes this year. The Huskies were coming. The ball is thrown low. Once again, the intended receiver, Derek Ayers, he should have made the catch. And that is a play that UCLA must convert in this ballgame. We talked about in the open that they're going to blitz and they're going to play man-to-man -man coverage. Now look at the cushion that the slot receiver has. There's a lot of room to get that ball in there. The ball should have been caught, but it could have been thrown a little bit higher for the receiver to make an easy catch. And you can see Wayne Cook knows when they blitz and we pick it up with this young offensive line, we've got to make the completion. UCLA did not have enough men out on the field and as... Merton gets ready for the field goal. They're going to have to take a timeout with 8.13 to go. First quarter from Seattle. Nine was the last time that Washington State and Washington beat UCLA in the same year. That Cougar and Husky sounded an awful lot alike there. I think we've got to find a new, uh, new stand in there. Merton to attempt the field goal, the 46 yards, he's missed five of his last six, and after making four against Tennessee, has made just two in the games against SMU and Washington State, and now has missed his first today. Probably one of the most mental positions that there is. I mean, it's so much a matter of confidence and believing you're going to make the kick. And it's wide right, so the first one wide left, this one wide right, and Merton is 0 for 2 today. He has now missed six of his last seven. And I was talking earlier about a kid named Jess, Jason Leslie who kicked last year for UCLA. He said, I used to compete on a daily basis with him as practice. We made each other better. He got the job. Leslie transferred to Colorado. He said, I just don't think without the competition I gave him, he's going to be as good a kicker. But Todd, you said it. It's such a mental yeah, game kicking really the football. You know, and you can see Terry Donahue, how important it is to him to keep this kid's head in the ball game because he's hoping that the kid can come back and maybe win the game in the fourth quarter for him. First and 10, 29-yard line for the Huskies, and Kaufman's got it. He's got a seam on the left, still on his feet. Across midfield, the stiff arm to the 40-yard line. Teddy Lawrence finally pushed him out of bounds. 30 yards on the pickup for Napoleon Kaufman. Well, now watch what a great job the Washington line does just... Sealing the penetration. As soon as Kaufman sees a little crease to the outside, he makes that electrifyingly quick move, bouncing it to the outside, and then he's got the sprinter speed on the corner. I tell you what, you just don't want to let him get his shoulders square upfield with a full head of steam. You want to keep him running to the sideline. That time they sealed the corner for him and let him spring it outside. Leads the Pac-10 in rushing sixth in the nation, and he's accounted for 85% of the Huskies' net rushing yards this year. First and 10. He were the throw, and that was deflected. Busting in there, looked like number 97, Philip Ward, the outside linebacker. And let's check in with Gary Reasons. Gary? Roger, the conditions on the field are pretty good, actually. It was overcast this morning. They had the field cover. We had missed a little rain. The field is a little slick, and I asked both kickers before the game whether or not their plant foot was going to be in, in question. Well, obviously, it might be affecting UCLA's kicker. Thanks, Gary. You know, the thing that amazes me about Kaufman, and, and very few backs have this, is the ability to plant and move laterally without losing speed. That's one of his great gifts, his ability to accelerate moving sideways. There was movement up front. No flags as Kaufman has it on the right side. Kaufman close to the first down to the 31-yard line where Paul Gittry, number 12, came up to make the tackle. That's a good point you make, Todd, because you think of all the great backs, and Gail Sayers is a guy that comes to mind who could do that and never lost any speed making that lateral cut. Defensively, Sally Asaya, George Case, the wild man, and nose guard, and Gary Walton. Ward, Smalley, Jasper, and Edwards, and in the secondary for the Bruins, Teddy Lawrence. Watch Abdul McCullough 9. He can stick you. 
Paul Guidry and Andy Colbert. And this is a, a unit really decimated by defections. They had a number of guys leave early to go to the NFL. They've had some injuries there. Seven people all told who could have been potential starters not back for the Bruins this year. Third down and one. First back through, gets it. That's number 30, Richard Thomas, who had the big touchdown reception and run last week against Miami as McCullough came up to make the tackle, but the Huskies have got the first down. Todd, talk to me about a confidence of a quarterback like Damon Heward and what that meant to him in the second half last week against Miami. Well, first of all, just the fact that they were able to go into the Orange Bowl and win a ball game down there. I mean, he's the obvious, the most visible leader of the football team being the quarterback. So to lead your team to a victory in that environment is a huge plus for him and for the team's confidence in him. And he made plays in the second half. He settled down and made plays that helped his team win. And everybody on that football team knew it. Kaufman slips at the line of scrimmage and no gain there. Now Kaufman, he, he's not big. If you look at the program, 5'9", 180 pounds. But folks, get this. He benches two and a half times his body weight. 420 pound bench press. There's only six or seven players in the Washington team yeah. that can bench more than that. He's a relentless worker. Yeah. He used to spend his summers here in Seattle. He'd get up at one o'clock in the morning and go run because you know what he says i know those def defensive guys aren't running right now <laughs> he says i'm going to be in such good shape they're not going to catch me he gets it again and he is stuck right at the 30 yard line that was philip ward 97 that came busting through and next saturday on abc sports it's a college football regional doubleheader first at 9 a.m pacific it's the uh, third down and 13. Trying to set up a screen that looked like that time. And finally, Hewer just throws it out of bounds. Good job that time by number 40, Rod Smalley, who shadowed Kaufman out to the far side. And Hewer did the smart thing and just threw it away. Yeah, you know, Hewer had to get rid of the football. That was a one-receiver route. They were setting up the delay screen and very well diagnosed by the UCLA defense really took that play out of uh, out of being effective. There's Jim Lampright, the uh, head coach of the Huskies in just his second year, but uh, oh so long with his Washington program as a player and then a, an assistant coach. And on fourth down, field goal attempt by John Wales, a sophomore from Kent, Washington, of 47 yards. He is three of six in that 40 to 49 yard category. He was making it for 55 yards before the game, and he nails that one through. So what a difference a field goal makes. The Bruins have missed two. The Huskies are one for one, and they lead it 3 nothing with 5.20 to go first quarter. A beautiful Seattle day. Todd, how do you like this? It's outdoors, okay huh? now. I mean, it was a little bit wet walking to breakfast this morning, but it's okay now. It didn't slow you down from eating, though, did it? No, it did no, not. It. Rain never stopped you. <laughs> 5.20 to go first quarter. As you look at the uh, kicker, John Wales comes from a great tradition of, uh, of kickers in the uh, Kent, Washington area. Jeff. Jaeger, who is a great kicker for the University of Washington. Yeah, spent a lot of time with him this offseason, actually even changed his number to reflect how much he respects uh, Jaeger. Of course, Jaeger led the NFL in scoring this past year, so a pretty good guy to get advice from. Ayers will field it, and good long kickoff. And the Bruins will have it first and 10 from the 20. So after a couple of pretty good field positions and uh, missed opportunities on the field goals, the uh, Washington defense now maybe can come to the forefront a little bit. I'll tell you what, it's really tough when you're struggling as an offense. You've got some new offensive linemen. You get the ball in good field position. I'm talking of UCLA. You've got to be able to capitalize. You've got to make some points, put some points on the board, get some confidence in your young team. And uh, I'll tell you what, Washington does a good job defending their own area. That, that's one of the strengths of this defense. See the Husky scoring streak there. Last time they were shut out against these Bruins back in 81. First and 10 from the 20 out of the high formation. Cook will look quickly to the near side to Kevin Jordan, and Jordan across the 30 to the 32. Jordan is a big-time player, second in the nation, averaging over 114 yards per game in reception. He's a junior out of Beltsville, Maryland, and he has really come to the forefront with Stokes being out with that deep thigh bruise injury this year. Yeah, and a good call right there by Bob Toledo. you got to get him involved in the ball game. You can't go much further into this fourth quarter and not let him get a touch. I mean, he's a, a guy that's as valuable to this team as Kaufman is to the Washington offense. you got to get the ball in his hands, let him touch it, get into the action. First and ten. Quick handoff to Milliner, still on his feet, drives forward. Good job of running right there by James Milliner. 
He's only carried the ball 19 times coming into this game. And Milliner with a good pickup of about seven yards. And, boy, that's the kind of first down play you like. Now, the thing about this defense, when you have eight people around the line of scrimmage, if you can get a body on everybody, and if the running back can get through the initial line, there's some room to run. You see all those bodies right in there around the line of scrimmage? If you can break that first line of the defense, you're going to pick up seven or eight yards every time you carry the football. Nice job just getting a body on people by the UCLA lineman. Quick handoff to Shaw out of the shotgun. Room on the right side. Breaks two tackles and gets down to the 45-yard line where Kilpatrick comes up to make the tackle. And once again, a good block by the big left tackle, Jonathan Ogden. Well, let's take a look at Jonathan Ogden. He is the key to this offensive line. Watch him show the pass, and then it's a little trap. It's a draw, but they lead it with the trap block by Ogden. He gets a great block out there to lead the play. I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a big man moving pretty quickly down here through the hole. Well, he was fifth in the nation at the 1994 NCAA Indoor Track Championships in the shot put, so you know that he's got to move across that ring quickly to throw it. But he showed some quickness there on first and ten, and Shaw doesn't get anything that time. Boy, he is racked up immediately by Deke Devers. And tonight on the ABC Family Movie, the network premiere of a classic... Try to get a screenplay call here, maybe get the ball to Charmin Shaw on a screen. They're doing a nice job running. They've mixed in a couple draws there. Another way to attack this defense, get them all rushing the quarterback, drop a screen off. Second and 12, they've got the reverse working. That's McElroy, and he is nailed by Hoffman back at the 42-yard line. The freshman, Jim McElroy, who they really think a lot of. He's got great quickness, and they wanted to get the ball in his hands today, but nothing working there. I'll tell you what, that's the kind of thing that Jim Lambright loves to see from his defense because you would think with an over-aggressive defense that you'd get them pursuing the play and you could run the reverse, but good discipline on the back side of the defense that time. When they came across the line of scrimmage, they maintained their contain, and they watched for that play coming back. Third down and 23 with 2.50 left to go first quarter. Cook with a lot of time will throw it underneath to Shaw. And he is tripped up at the 49-yard line. Doing the job there was Russell Hairston, the senior from Bellevue, Washington. This is a secondary for the Huskies that uh, last year picked off 22 passes, and Hairston was one of the guys that uh, was a ringleader. He had four interceptions a year ago, two so far this year. As the hunting team comes on, Darren Shager back at his 35-yard line. He's second in the Pac-10 at 41.8 yards per punt, and that is Napoleon Kaufman. Kaufman with the fair catch called at the 25, and those UCLA defenders very close to him on that fair catch. Let's go down to Gary Reasons. Gary. Third down was very difficult for Wayne there. He had a little trouble with the noise here. They've recorded a decibel level at 135 decibels, which is like a jet taking off. This is one of the noisiest stadiums in the country. 70% of the 72,000 seats are between the end zones. Roger. Thanks, Gary. You know, it's interesting because in the, in the previous games, UCLA has been almost exclusively a no-huddle offense, but because of the noise here, they're doing a lot more getting in the huddle, calling the plays in the huddle, and then coming to the line of scrimmage. Two minutes to go, first quarter, Kaufman on the right side as he gets it across the 30 to the 31-yard line, gain of six, Shane Jasper. The senior, number 90, came up to make the tackle on Napoleon Kaufman, who leads the nation in all-purpose yardage. And folks, I, I mean, just... A lot of good things happen when he touches the ball. I mean, he can catch it out of the backfield. Uh, he can run with it, as we all know. Uh, punt returns, kickoff returns. But it's interesting to note, Todd, that all of his touchdowns in college have been on the yeah. ground, 26 of them. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, he, because he's always been a returner, and you know you want to get him the football throwing to him, but he has never caught a touchdown pass. And I'd be surprised if he goes through the, this his final season without catching a touchdown well, pass. He's got a goal of either taking a punt or a kickoff back or catching a touchdown pass. So he'd like to do it today. Second and five. Haven't seen Bruner yet as the flags go down. Delay a game. Didn't get, the, didn't get the playoff in time. And, oh, there's some pushing and shoving going on up front. Frank Garcia, the center, number 65. And it looks like Rod Smalley, the inside backer, were having at one another. Now, Lambright said about Garcia, he said he's the most oh, defensive oh, player who oh, plays oh, offensive for us. Five-yard penalty, still second down. He said he's got a real attitude about things. <laughs> 
Watch uh, Garcia, 65 in the middle. You can see Bruner yeah. is the guy on the end of the line here, the tight end that's going to move. And really, he has, as a tight end, you can reset. But the problem was he was not reset for a full second before the ball was snapped. Therefore, you have the uh, movement penalty. You think they might have been throwing to him that time? He was a little anxious to get down the field? I think he's, he's anxious to get into the football game. And he was a key receiver last week on third down. Every catch he made was for a first down last week against Miami. That was Kaufman in motion on second and ten. Your pump fake. Now he's going up to Bornson. The dive, and he can't hold on to it. Boy, Bjornsson had it right there in his hands. Teddy Lawrence was on the coverage. So they've gone deep on two occasions now to the six foot five inch Eric Bjornsson, who averages 28 yards a catch. Well, I'll tell you what, they've guessed right twice. UCLA came with the inside blitz. You can see both linebackers blitzing. Hewitt read it, went with the pump fake, and this ball is put right where it has to be, over his outside shoulder. It hit both hands, and when the ball hits both hands, you expect him to make the catch. Hewitt so far 0 for 4 in passing, and this brings up a third down and 10 situation. UCLA blitz it on the last down, second down. We expect them to see him coming again on third down. Challenge going to Bjornsson. He makes the catch this time at the 39-yard line, and he's got the first down. Andy Colbert, who is five foot eight and 165 pounds, was on the coverage. Well, and he's got to respect Bjornsson. He's got to give him a cushion because he's out there by himself. But take a look at Edwards. Outside linebacker in a stand-up position is going to come on an inside blitz, and they just kind of slide the line down. Everybody picks up. There's a man on a man in there, and you can see Kessie's in there. He's going to make sure that Edwards... up on him. Yeah, don't want him anywhere near the quarterback after that first sack in the first quarter. Bjornsson's a great story. A former quarterback here, a moved to wide receiver, battled with Heward last year. They shared playing time, but strictly a wide receiver this year as Kaufman tries the middle. And nothing there that time as Rod Smalley, the inside backer, came up to make the tackle. And that is the way that you have to stop Napoleon Kaufman. You've got to get penetration. You've got to make initial contact with him behind the line of scrimmage. You can't let him get into the middle of your defense, into the secondary, and get people in one-on-one -on -one situations because he will absolutely kill you if he gets in those situations. Todd, I was impressed last week against Miami with his tough running inside. I mean, he really got some hard yards late in the game. I'll tell you what, that, that shows that he's a great senior leader for this football team. He does whatever he has to do to help his team win. And, and as you mentioned, the strength, the bench press numbers, he's a strong, strong football player. We've completed the first quarter of play from Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington. And Washington leads UCLA 3-0. And welcome back to Husky Stadium. Roger Twibell, Todd Blackledge, Gary Reasons down on the sideline with you. Washington leads UCLA 3 to nothing, and the Huskies have it second and 10 at the 39-yard line. Staggered backs with Kaufman and Thomas, and Hewitt in the short drop, setting it to Bjornsson. Inside the 40, down to the 36-yard line, and the mismatch there, the 6'5", Bjornsson against the 5'8"-inch Andy Colbert. I'll tell you what, Napoleon Kaufman did a great job picking up the blitz, first of all. Watch to the right of your screen. Donnie Edwards, the best pass rusher, is going to get picked up by Kaufman. That allows Heward to stay right in the pocket and make the throw against man-to-man -man coverage. A great throw and catch Heward to Bjornsson, but credit Napoleon Kaufman staying in there and picking up the blitzing linebacker. 25 yards on the reception. First and 10 at the 36. Kaufman's a lone back. You were looking right all the way, going down and intercepted. Donnie Edwards. Edwards picks it off and brings it back across the 25 to the 28-yard line. Donnie Edwards with his second pick of the year. The pass intended for Ernie Conwell, the tight end. Well, now look at Edwards. The last play, he lined up there and blitz. This time he's going to go into coverage, and they're actually going to double cover the tight end. There's two guys there, really an ill-advised throw by Damon Heward. Too much white jersey there. Throw that ball away or find somewhere else to throw it. And credit, a great job by Edwards getting his left hand up there to just kind of knock the ball back to himself and then coming up with the interception. And there's been a personal foul called on UCLA. Donnie Edwards, such a big play maker for the Bruins in two seasons and four games. He's had 24 tackles for losses, 14 and a half sacks, five interceptions, five forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. He just really gets after you. Yeah. Donnie Edwards, 6'3", 216-pound junior. On the run back, dead ball, personal foul. UCLA, first down. 
Todd, you mentioned it. Ill-advised pass. I mean, Hewitt was looking that way the whole time. And he had double coverage and tried to slip that thing back in there. Yeah, that's one of those situations as a young quarterback and as he matures and gets better, he'll realize, you know, even though that's where the play was designed to go, it obviously was not fooling UCLA. They had it very well covered, very well diagnosed. you got to go somewhere else with the football. Just get off that primary read and go somewhere else with the ball. See the turnover ratio for the Bruins uh, after four games in 93 was plus 10 and now updated today with that interception. It's minus two in 94. Yeah. Off to a pretty good start here in this ball game and, th and their defense has given their offense some chances to stay in this ball game and that's all you could ask for right now if you're Terry Donahue. Movement on the right side of the line. That penalty was at the end of the play after the run back. And the ball moved back to the 14. You know, getting back to Damon Hewitt, I know the coaching staff was uh, really concerned and hopeful that he would carry Red that ball. momentum. False start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. From the second half of the Miami game into this game and take it through the rest of the season, does it look like maybe he's sort of gone back a little bit? Well, I think maybe early in this ball game, you know, so much a part of being a good quarterback and, and being a good leader is making good decisions. And that obviously was a bad decision he made right there. I mean, a, an incomplete or throwing it up in the fourth row is a much better solution than throwing it to the wrong color jersey. First down and 15. Just underway, second quarter. Going to stop. Trying the left side and getting absolutely nowhere. Sharmon Shaw and all over him is Inc. Aliaga and Deke Devers. I'll tell you, Devers has come up with some big plays for the Huskies so far this year. Monday night, it's a key AFC Central matchup. The Houston... Steelers 2-2, uh, two and two, Oilers 1-3 one in the AFC Central. As Cook on the play action on second down and 16, and he finds his receiver Kevin Jordan over on the far side, up to about the 18-yard line, where Russell Hairston was there on the coverage. Nice play that time. Don't try to get it all back in one play. Get a half of it back, maybe a little bit more in half with that nice safe pass off the play action. Now you come up third down in a situation you can work with, with six or seven yards or six yards to go, much better than being having to throw out of your own end zone. So a good decision that time by Wayne Cook. Third down and six. Finds Jordan. Good job there by the quarterback, yeah. Wayne Cook, and the receiver, Kevin Jordan, as he gets it to the 29-yard line. Lawyer Malloy in on the tackle. I'll tell you what, and the offensive line, this beat-up offensive line, doing a pretty good job picking up the blitzes of Washington. Watch Cook just do a nice job buying a half-second extra time by stepping up in the pocket, able to clear his vision and see his receiver, Jordan, there with enough yardage for the first down. Good job by Cook just buying that extra half second by stepping up a couple steps in the pocket. First and 10 from the 29-yard line. They pull to Weinman and a big hole for Sharmon Shaw as he gets to the 40. Great job that time by the offensive line of the UCLA Bruins as they pulled Overhauser and Rome out and made some room for Sharmon Shaw. It's the old counter trap play. They pull the backside guard and tackle. Watch, they're going to be coming from the right of your screen. They block down on this side. Then here comes Overhauser leading the play. Up in there, nice job. And again, the point of the attack. If you get blocks at the point of attack, Washington has so many guys committed to the to the line of scrimmage. If you get through that initial line, it can turn into a big play for you. First and ten at the 40-yard line. Charmon Shaw across the 45 to the 47. You know, it's an interesting story about Shaw. He's from Dorsey High School in Los Angeles. And this past summer, he worked out with another former Dorsey High football player. Bino Bryant that used to play at Washington and uh, they spent a lot of time together this last summer and uh, you know, Bryant was a pretty good running back up here for the Huskies yeah. and I don't know <laughs> if, if the Washington fans could be real appreciative of the fact that uh, he gave Shaw some pointers but Shaw is showing well so far today 11 carries 52 yards we had 71 yards last week against Washington State a team that coming into that game had only given up 36 yards rushing so he's a quality running back 
that's Darren Washington. And Washington still battling as he gets down to the 46-yard line. Well, one thing to note about these Bruin running backs, they've got five guys here today that have rushed for over 100 yards in a game. So they may not have that Napoleon Kaufman right. back, although I think Shaw has got the potential. And a young man by the name of Skip Hicks, who is suited up, but we haven't seen play yet today, number 42, certainly have the potential to go on to, to great things in their career. Well, the thing that's great right now for UCLA is the fact that they're getting some good production out of their running game. They can throw the play action pass right now after a couple solid runs, a good time to fake the ball to Shaw now. Maybe try to get a bigger play with your wide receiver, Jordan. First and 10 from the 46-yard line. Trying to run on the left side, and nothing there as Steve Hoffman came busting through. Hoffman makes a tackle back at the 49, and Shaw with a loss of about three. And there's Skip Hicks, 42, who last year, you might remember, had the big game against Nebraska. Had some injuries during the season and then was uh, competing in track in the triple jump and tore the anterior cruciate ligament in his knee. Six months later, the doctors, Hicks, they all say he's ready to go. He's on the sidelines and it's up to Coach Derry, Terry Donahue to decide today if, in fact, he'll use it. Second down and 13 as they bring Kevin Jordan to the near side. And a lot of confusion. UCLA yeah. was very confused trying to get lined up that time and Cook forced to, to burn a timeout there. And we'll take it with 10.37 left to go in the first half. Washington leads it by three. Well, welcome back here to Husky Stadium. We saw a graphic a moment ago, Todd, that said that uh, Washington has uh, been outrushed today by UCLA. And it's interesting to note that the Bruins have not rushed the football that well this year. As a matter of fact, they've been outrushed by some 60 yards per game, but they're doing a pretty good job today of running the football. And a, and a different emphasis. They've been playing a lot with three wide receivers, not even using a tight end. They're using a lot of two tight end in this ball game, really trying to take it right at this Washington defense. And that was their second tight end, Evie, who went in motion as they come underneath with Jordan. He fumbles the football. Jordan fumbled the football, and Reggie Reeser comes up with his second fumble recovery of the year. Well, Jordan clearly had the first down. It was an excellent call on second down and 13, throw the wide receiver screen, and he just fumbled the ball right into the hands of Reeser. He wasn't hit. He just lost control of the ball. Now watch. Here's Jordan at the bottom of the screen. See him coming back to the quarterback. Perfectly executed wide receiver screen. And right here, he's just going to lose it. Nobody hits him. Nobody d knocks the ball out. He just absolutely trying to put the ball away. It pops out right into the hands of Reeser. You see last week, two interceptions, two fumble recoveries for 21 points. So Washington takes advantage of those opportunities given to them by the other teams as Kaufman tries the right side, and he is grabbed up. Well, I'll tell you what, Grady Stretz came through and made a terrific tackle there, the junior from Tempe, Arizona, as Kaufman was having a little bit of trouble with his footing and just couldn't get it to the outside. Yeah, and again, watch the penetration that's going to make Kaufman try to bounce this to the outside. He never gets his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. He has to try to scoot it outside, and that allows Stretz, who obviously doesn't have the same speed as Kaufman, but because Kaufman has to bounce a couple times, it allows Stretz to come down the line and make the play. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. I, I mean, <laughs> what's Kaufman about? 4-2, four, 4-3, four, Stretz is probably about, what, 5-1? in the 40. Yeah, but he'll tell all his friends that he walked that's, that's, Kaufman down on that play. You're exactly right. Bueller quickly, and the ball nearly intercepted. Did they give him the pick? Yeah, yeah they got it. All right, Andy Colbert. Andy Colbert comes up with the interception. Fred Coleman was the intended receiver, number 22, who couldn't get the handle on it. Well, a little bit of giveaway takeaway here because this ball's pretty well thrown by Hewitt. Now watch Coleman. He gets his hands on it, and then it goes off his leg up into the air. If it doesn't hit his leg, it doesn't pop up in the air, and Colbert wow. alertly right on the spot Take another comes look. up with the ball. I don't know if we can get another look at that. I don't know whether Colbert had that in his grasp all the way. But nonetheless, it's been ruled that way. I'll tell you what, if UCLA doesn't put points on the board in this drive right here, it will emotionally and, and from a psychological standpoint really be devastating. On first and ten, they try to run it right up the middle. Take a look now. As Colbert's going to fumble this thing, Todd, after Coleman loses it, watch this. He tips it. There's one, two, 
three, four, <laughs> five. And now, did you see the ball hit the ground? I, I, it's hard to yeah. see from that. It looked like he might have had his right arm underneath the ball. He definitely was bob on it, but uh, as he was hitting the ground, it looked like he may have trapped the ball against his body. Uh, tough one to call from that angle. Second down and eight, 9.06 to go first half. Bruins with a, another opportunity. He wants to go to Jordan. Now Cook comes back the other way, and the two players collide with one another. Mike Wynn was the intended receiver, and I'll tell you what, he had his man, Reggie Reeser, beat, and they collided. Yeah, take a look. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of contact down there, and you're going to see that this is going to get stepped on the back of his ankle. It was incidental contact there, but there was a lot of pushing running down the field. Possibly could have called a, uh, a pass interference call. I'll tell you what, that's a play right there where if that's J.J. Stokes running down the field, he probably gets that call because everybody knows he's the All-American. Right. But with Wynn running down there, doesn't command the same respect maybe from the official as an All-American like Stokes. Third down and eight from the 37 and out of the shotgun. And here come the Huskies on the blitz, and quickly Cook finds a man. At the 18-yard line, the catch by Brian Adams, the senior from Bakersville, Bakersfield, California, and the only man remaining from the 1990 team that came up and upset the Huskies. Watch the blitz coming right up the middle, and a great job again by the line of UCLA, picking up the inside blitz. And then what, a great throw, and I'll tell you what, what was Chambers thinking about there? I, I he no could have intercepted that ball. He could have at least knocked the ball down. It was like he was trying to get out of the way of the that throw. That was unbelievable. He had his hands up, and he pulled them down. First and 10 at the 19. Nothing going there as the Bruins try to run the left side. Absolutely nothing there for Skip Hicks, the sophomore from Wichita Falls, Texas, who has just checked into the game. Look at the Husky defense in the red zone. Opponents have been there 13 times, four touchdowns and four field goals. And I'll tell you the other thing, their opponents have not done much when Washington right. has turned the ball over. Just 10 points and eight turnovers so far this year. Yeah, they do a great job of playing transition defense. When something bad happens to them, a turnover, they are focused when they come back on the football field. That's a mark of great coaching and a defensive-minded head coach in Jim Lambright. Second down and 13. Correct. Well, I'll tell you what, all of a sudden, he saw Richie Chambers, and all of a sudden, he got rid of the football. Well, he saw Chambers, and he also saw Hoffman over there defending the screen. They were trying to set up the screen to the left side. Now, when you, when you run a screen, you want the pass rush to come. You want to invite him in. So that's not a problem for him, but you can see over here, Hoffman has a bead right on the screen. Even if he completes that pass, there's nowhere to go with the screen. He just intentionally threw that one away. Good defense, good read that time in the middle by Steve Hoffman. Third down and 13 from the 22. And Jordan goes to the top of your screen. Washington shifting the defensive front around and pitch steps up. Now he's going to check off. Didn't get the play up. Now they throw the flag. Now they call it. And Cook gets rid of it. But that Washington defensive front, Todd, really moving around a lot, giving Cook something to think about. And tried to change the play and just couldn't get it off in time. Yeah, the only good thing about this one is I think UCLA will at least get another shot at it there here on no third play. down. Dead ball, delay a game offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Cook didn't have much of a chance to make that completion, but even though now it makes it third down and 18, at least they get another shot at it to throw it for the first down or towards the end zone. 7.46 left to go, and, and UCLA absolutely has to get something yeah. out of this drive. I yeah, mean, they, if they, they, if really they can't do. get it in and get a score on the touchdown, they need to get Merton another shot at it and get his confidence up. And remember, this is a team that was shut out last week. I mean, they've, they've gone a long time now without scoring any points. Three of six in third down situations. Cook looking to Adams and incomplete. The intended receiver, Brian Adams, Reggie Reeser, was there on the coverage. Texas leading Colorado right now in Austin 10-7. And Iowa up on Michigan. A lot of upsets uh, taking place so far today as Bjorn Merton will come in to attempt his third field goal of the day. He has missed six of his last seven. They spotted at the 34, making a 44-yard attempt. 
Kevin Walker, number 26, is a holder. That's just about all he does. The high snap. And it's good. So for Bjorn Merton, the third time's the charm. And with 7.37 to go, we're tied in Seattle. Pond is near the center of campus. Freshmen are welcomed here to the University of Washington life by being thrown in. Hopefully, they can swim. Uh, Todd, what did they do to you at Penn State when you showed up there? I hid from them. I, I tell you what, I hid until I was a sophomore. I got hurt my freshman year and didn't have to hang around any of them. And uh, by the time they saw me consistently, I was a sophomore. Yeah, I had the same deal as you. I went to so many different schools, they could never find me either. <laughs> Testing all the educational waters. Absolutely. Were. Just spreading goodwill throughout the country. <laughs> uh, you know, UCLA, for all the complaining and, you know, injuries and defections and not playing well in recent weeks, they've shown pretty well here so far. Yeah, they've sucked it up. Their defense has really played exceptionally well here in this first half so far. They've given their offense the ball in pretty good situations. And as we mentioned, if UCLA wasn't able to capitalize that last possession and put some points on the board, it really would have been devastating. See the uh, dual backs there. Rashawn Sheehy is the man right in front of uh, Kaufman. Now they split as Burton will kick it. And that's Sheehy, the freshman from Bakersfield, California. And he is tripped up at the 25-yard line. Glenn Tompkins was the man that came down to make the tackle on special teams. So with 7.32 to go here in the first half, the Huskies and the Bruins tied up at three. Uh, Damon Hewitt try to get this... Washington offense uh, untracked. I think part of that, he, he's got to try to get the ball to Mark Bruner now, his big tight end. I mean, he's a, he's a great receiver. He's a big target. He's not touched the football yet in this ball game. So I would expect to see him this early in this series going to number 85 in purple. Well, so far today, Washington with just 33 yards rushing as they give it to Kaufman. And some good penetration there by the Bruin defense, but Kaufman still manages to get four yards out of the play. The first man that busted through was Sally Asaya. He came through to really redirect that play. And then it was Gary Walden and Andy Colbert that came up to make the tackles. You know, there are very few, maybe only a handful of guys in the country that can turn that play into a positive game. He was hit in the backfield. UCLA had great penetration, did everything right in defending that play. But Kaufman was still able to bounce it to the outside and pick up five, five yards. Watch this now. This play has nowhere to go. They got great penetration. He runs into his own man, but because of his speed and instincts, still can pop it out to the outside and pick up five. On second and six, a hole on the right side. Kaufman's got the first down across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Paul Gittry and Abdul McCullough. The two men to make the tackle, and it's a first down for the University of Washington. And I'll tell you, they've had a balanced offense so far this year. Uh, Todd, they've had 26 first downs rushing, 26 passing coming into this game, and their yardage rushing 529, passing 548. You can't get any more balanced than no, that. No, it's as good as it gets right there. Napoleon Kaufman, 10 carries, 55 yards, very active first half already. On first and 10, Heward in trouble. Had some good pressure that time. The pass incomplete at the 40-yard line. Looked like Grady Stretz, 77, the man that came through and forced Heward to get rid of the football before he would have liked to. The intended receiver was Richard Thomas, and that man, Donnie Edwards, right there on the coverage. Yeah, what you hope for when you run a bootleg is that the play fake will force the lineman who's got contained to maybe take a step to the inside. But that time, Stretch was not fooled by the play fake and went right to the quarterback, forced the early throw by Hewitt. So good defensive penetration by Grady Stretch. You wouldn't realize that UCLA was last in the Pac-10 in rushing defense and last in first downs allowed and last in pass defense in the conference. They are playing awfully well today as Hewitt took a smack as he finally gets it out to his tight end, Mark Bruner, number 85. Bruner covered by Donnie Edwards there. And it was Shane Jasper, number 90, that came busting through, Todd. Well, they're putting Edwards man-to-man -man now on Bruner. I mean, their best against your best, nose-to-nose -nose right there. And you can see Bruner gets the push, and that's all he needs, a little bit of separation. But pretty good job by Edwards closing on the play and stopping it to a short game. But Bruner, a clutch receiver, and, and they just had to get him involved in the game sooner or later. That was his 70th career reception and Bruner's now just five shy of Rod Jones all-time 
record for tight ends here at the University of Washington. So we'll follow that for you on a third down and seven from the 43-yard line, and Heward would like a timeout. Well, the play clock was running down again. Both teams struggling with the play clock right now. 5.37 left to go, first half. of today's game will be selecting a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team and for the 24th year through the Chevrolet scholarship program $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship fund of each school that's coming up later on here today and our coverage of Washington and UCLA as the rain starts coming down again here at Husky Stadium third down and seven that was the first time out for Washington UCLA has burned two of their timeouts here in the first half. Hewitt looking near side, and that's Bjornsson who makes the catch, and he has it up for the first down. They will start. Line. Andy Colbert was there on the coverage, and Todd, that should be there all day, 6-5 against 5-8. Yeah, and, and you got to give him a little bit of respect because coming into the game, averaging nearly 30 yards of reception, so he's been making some big plays. Got to give him a little bit of room, and nice target, throwing a little out route. And, that time they, they kept Bruner, their best receiver, their top receiver. They kept him in to block maximum protection through to the one-on-one -on -one coverage outside. First down and 10 at the 48. Wide receiver split to the top of the screen. And Kaufman for the 11th time. Look at him bounce outside. Can he get there? I'll tell you what, great job that time by the UCLA defense. Uh, Philip Ward and Abdul McCullough out there. And let's check in with Gary Reasons. For Heisman hopeful Napoleon Kaufman, it's all in the numbers. Here in Washington, they've made a little stat chart here for Napoleon. He is the career all-purpose rushing, rushing leader here in Washington. He can eclipse Washington's all-purpose rushing yardage. And at 6.9 yards every time he touches the ball, he is very exciting. He is America's most exciting all-purpose player. However, the, one, the number that he's interested in, it's 2,815 miles to go pick up the tr touchdown trophy at the Athletic Club in New York. Thanks, Gary. Napoleon Kaufman rushed for over 5,100 yards in high school in Lompoc, California. On second and 13, Heward will run it down to the 43-yard line where Shane Jasper and George Case were there to meet him. There you see the all-purpose yards, which he leads the nation right now in that category. You see the rushing, that's an all-time Washington leader, and the total yards there, too. The receiving, kickoff return, punt return. Uh, Jim Lambright before the season said, I want to get him the ball. I want him to touch it at least 35 times a game these first four games because they're going to be on TV. And you know the probation where right now they can't go to a bowl game. So he says, I want to showcase him as much as possible. He's been averaging about 33 touches a game. But plus, that's the best chance for you to win up here, too, is get him the football. And third down. For the 35-yard line, Heward. Paul Gittry came up to make the tackle. And coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders. What I teach a defense to do is to knock that ball down. Don't try to catch it. I mean, knock the ball down to the ground so the ball can't get tipped up in the air. That's, that's what happens a lot. First and 10, Hewitt on the play action. He's going to run with it again. And not the wise choice that time as two men were there. Philip Ward, 97, and Rod Smalley, number 40, and Grady Stretz once again given good pursuit from the outside. Well, Brewer is, is, is going to be the top receiver that he's looking for. Donnie Edwards doing a great job just staying with the man man. He's got that left hand on the jersey he's a little bit. That's a little NFL pass protection, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, doing a pretty good job just kind of riding him out there. He's actually dropping off into zone, but they're right away in the coverage. He's going to stick with the man to man until the quarterback looks off. Then he'll drop off into zone. So a pretty good plan right now using Donnie Edwards' man to man situations against the tight end Bruner. Second down and 13 with 318 to go. And they get it to Kaufman out here. He has got blockers in front of him. Kaufman weaves it inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. And that's a first down for Washington. And that is a play that the Washington coaching staff wanted to run today. And they finally did it. Let's check in with Gary. The conditions on the field are a little bit uh, bad. The guys are starting to slip a little bit. The mist is coming down. It's on the field. Kaufman has had a little trouble running. But that play, he obviously didn't. Roger? Thanks, Gary. We had a penalty marker down on that play. And it's going to be holding against Washington. Well, they set that play up nicely, uh, Todd. They had uh, two blockers out in front of him, but good pursuit. Holding, holding, 
offense, 10-yard penalty to the spot of the foul. Still of, second down. A lot of times when that happens, when you set up the screen like that, the, the holding will occur by a wide receiver out on the outside because he's got the block that has to take the longest. I mean, he really has to try to stay on that block for the longest amount of time. You're bringing linemen out in front, and uh, that time I think maybe Dave Janoski or Bjornsson out there was responsible for that holding penalty. Take a look down here. Donnie Edwards is out there on the play. Okay, it's not a wide receiver. It is one of the offensive linemen that came out. Oh. It wasn't a very long hold, no. but... <laughs> hey, Edwards has held that long today. <laughs> Second and 23. Another screen. And they'll set it up to Thomas. Now, he scored on this play against Miami last week and does a good job this time as he took it outside to get to the 33-yard line. Last week, he cut it back to the inside and went 75 yards. You know, and, and pretty good job that time by Bill Dietrich, the offensive coordinator. Very few times do you see a team come back with the same kind of play. This time, they fake the screen to the right. It's a double screen out to the fullback to the wide side of the field. Nice job by Patrick Kessie, number 54, the lead blocker out there in front. And they really stretch the defense. They fake the screen one way to Kaufman. Certainly, everybody's going to run with Napoleon, come back to the fullback on the wide side of the field and pick up a good game. Thomas is a great story. He's dyslexic, but he's only one class away from his history degree in three years, and he's going to get double major in sociology. That's 37. Here we go to the far side, and Bjornsson is right there. That's been his money guy today. That has been the money guy today because I, I think what UCLA do, is doing is they're taking Bruner out of the game. Yeah, well, Bruner is staying in the block a lot. They're doing a lot of maximum protection, just going two-man routes. And Bru uh, right now, Bjornsson is really having a field day against Andy Colbert out there. Again, you mentioned the size differential, but Bjornsson doing a nice job showing one thing, breaking, make some nice breaks to the outside and giving a nice target to the quarterback. And, Heward throwing the ball where it has to be. When you throw those out routes, you got to keep it to the outside. Don't want to get it back in where the defender is. Bjornsson, four receptions, 57 yards, and Heward, after missing his first four, has now got it going as he checks off at the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from the 22. And that's number 12, Leon Neal, who has checked into the game, a junior from Long Beach, California. Neal, who has carried the ball just 18 times coming into this game. I mean, Kaufman gets all the work. 86 carries for Kaufman, and Neal just doesn't get to carry it that much, but maybe next year will be his year. <laughs> Kaufman's another one of those kids that stayed around and decided to play one more year. Could have come out last year. Yeah, it's kind of been a, uh, an exciting year for that with some guys. Well, yeah, I mean, Stokes, Stokes and Wheatley Tyrone. both have gotten hurt. You know, they could have come out too. Second down and seven. At the 19 on the option. Heward, he's going to take it. He's got a seam. And Heward gets a first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. So a good bit of running by Damon Heward. And he did this in the second half against Miami yeah. last week very effectively. Well, it, you know, if you run the option just enough, it keeps a defense honest. And that time, Heward, I think it's a checkoff most of the time. It's, it's an audible at the line of scrimmage to go to the uh, to the option. Now watch, he's going to take it down the line, and then the last man on the defensive line, that's who you option. Little cat and mouse game out there. Does a nice job faking like he's going to pitch it to the tailback and cutting it back to the inside. And that, really, you try to put that guy in a no-win situation. If he takes the quarterback, you pitch the ball to the tailback. If he defends the tailback, you got to keep the ball and cut up to the inside. And Heward ran it to perfection. And using the clock very effectively, 133 left to go first half. Ball just inside the 10, first and goal, and that was Neal trying the right side, and Grady Stretz, 77, who's played himself pretty good football game so far, was right there to meet Neal. Second down situation now. I, I think they got to try to get the ball to Bruner now. They've been keeping him in and blocking and throwing the ball to the wide receivers, but now down around the goal line, he's a big target. I think they've got to try to go some type of a crossing route, get him into the end zone for a throw. 15th play of the drive as Janoski and Coleman are split to the near side on second and goal. The ball back at the 11 here. Looking for Janoski. Touchdown. Keep Bruner in to block the pass protection. 
they're working to the wide receivers. A perfect throw by Heward right to the outside, and Janowski finds the end zone. They're looking for the man-to-man -man situation. They're spreading out this UCLA defense, kind of using Bruner as a decoy almost right now, keeping him in the block, throwing it to their wide receivers. A big catch for Janowski. Just Janowski's fourth catch of the year and his first touchdown reception of the year as Wales comes on to attempt the point after. And it's good. Well, that was a big-time drive by the Washington Huskies there. And with 48 seconds left to go in the first half, Washington leads UCLA 10 to 3. Well, again, a nice job just stretching the UCLA defense, trying to spread them all out. Kind of anticipating UCLA's defense, anticipating, as I did, that they were going to go to Pruner down there by the goal line. They spread that defense out and work it to the slot receiver for the touchdown. And I, I mentioned it was Janowski's first touchdown reception this year for the sophomore from Corona, California. It is first career reception, so he'll take that football and put it in the trophy case oh, yeah. at home. Well, Janoski's in the slot. Down to the right, the receiver in the slot. And watch, they're going to work him to the outside. They're going to take Coleman and run him to the sideline. Clear out the deep defender and then let Janoski work one-on-one -on -one in there against the strong safety, Abdul McCullen. Pretty good design getting a wide receiver working man-to-man -man against a strong safety. That's not a cornerback, Abdul McCullen, who's used to going man-to-man. -man. That's a strong safety and a little bit of a mismatch in favor of Washington there. You remember the first touchdown pass you threw at Penn State? The first no, I don't. <laughs> I thought that was a big moment in a player's life, that first touchdown. I guess it was so long ago. I remember the last one I threw. That was even more memorable. Who was that against? Ayers and McElroy back deep for UCLA, and that's Derek Ayers. And he is swamped at the 18-yard line. First man down there for the Huskies, number 10, Scott Greenlaw. And Greenlaw has been down a couple of times on kick coverage. So with 43 seconds and just one timeout remaining, the Bruins will have it first and 10 as we check in with Gary Reasons. Gary? You may have noticed that Napoleon Coffin was not in the game in the last series. He's re-injured his right shoulder. However, he is probably over to return. We should see him back early in the second half. Roger. Well, thanks, Garrett. we got to get him to the same doctor McNair went to. I mean, here's a guy who's dislocated shoulder last week and is going to play for Alcorn today. Mm. Rub a little dirt on it, I guess. <laughs> I've got a couple of elements I'd like to have that doctor check on. On first down... Shaw gets his way up to the 27-yard uh, line. And the uh, Bruins will just go ahead and let the uh, clock run. There's a look at Napoleon Kaufman. He's a tough kid. Hard worker. Yeah, he, uh, every, he earned every yard that he got last week against Miami. I mean, that was a defense that is a great run defense well, that was really geared into to stopping him, to trying to take him out of the ball game. And what, what do you think? I mean, he only had 80 yards. A lot of people say, well, you know, the, that's not going to impress the people on the East Coast and, and, and the Heisman uh, watch. But, uh, you know, they, he was a marked man last week. There's no question about it. He got those 80 yards in the second half, and they were all tough yards. So I, I don't think that belittles you know his quest for that trophy at all and, and see I, I think part of that is too that I don't think that the Heisman race is all about numbers I don't think it's all about who has the best numbers or who puts up the best statistics week in and week out I mean it's what he does it you know what he does for the team does he help the team win what are the other things he did just like a couple plays today where he's not even running the football where he's staying in and blocking against a blitz those are all critical things 26 seconds now they're going to change the clock back to 26 seconds. Once again, UCLA just with the one timeout remaining. Bruins have lost uh, two in a row. Uh, they struggled, of course, with SMU. Uh, held on to beat Tennessee in their opening game. And then, I'll tell you, a real good Washington State team uh, waxed him down the Rose Bowl last week. And Shaw takes it. He's got some room. Shaw is nailed from behind, manages to hold on to the football as he gets to the 46-yard line, and now UCLA wants to use that last time out. Well, that's a situation, Roger, where uh, you're just running the play and, and thinking that if it doesn't do much, you'll just run the clock out. But if you pick up a, a decent game, 
might as well call the timeout and try to take a shot at maybe a Hail Mary or, or a couple throws down the field. I agree with you. <laughs> now, all right, you're going to throw the Hail Mary. We talked a moment ago about defending the Hail Mary. Well, see, now what I would do here, if, if we line up in a Hail Mary, I'd, I'd try to throw, run three receivers down the field or two receivers downfield and then break one to the outside and maybe get about a 20, 25-yard comeback throw to the sideline. At least then you got a chance to kick the field goal. Uh, you know, trying to go for the touchdown every time on the Hail Mary is not when you don't need the touchdown right now. It's different if it's the end of the ball game. Right now, all you really want to do is just try to get yourself in position to make attempt, an attempt at a field goal. Jim Lambright talking to the uh, Washington defense, and there's Terry Donahue, Bob Toledo, his offensive coordinator, with uh, Wayne Cook, the senior, 23 years of age. Uh, Cook uh, had an injury-plagued early career at UCLA before finally overcoming those knee injuries and earning the starting spot. So first and 10, 11 seconds left to go, and uh, Napoleon Coffin leaving the field. Get inside to get that uh, shoulder tended to. Cook's going down the middle, got his receiver. Now the clock will stop long enough to move the chain, so they have time to get their team lined up and run a kill-the-clock play, and that's what Cook is going to do, get his team lined up, throw the ball on the ground, kill the clock, and then they can line up for one more play. That was Josh Eby, a backup tight end, a freshman from San Diego, 25 yards on the pickup, and he throws it down, and one second remains, so a good job right there by Wayne Cook. The reception was made by Eby, and that's going to give Merton a shot at it. That's all you want to do, just get one more play. You got the big run by Shaw, then you get one more pass play down there, and at least you can line up and try to put three more points on the board. So Merton, who missed his first two, connected on his last one from 44. This ball looks like it's going to be spotted 37, making a 47-yard attempt. Kevin Walker's the holder. Chris Anderson will snap it. Oh, off the upright. Man, and it's going bad for you. It's going bad. Plenty of leg that time for Bjorn Merton. So three missed field goal attempts by Merton in the first half. And the Huskies lead the Bruins 10-3. Coming up, the Prudential Halftime Report with John Saunders. All the scores and highlights. We're at halftime at Seattle. And on the board first. Well, Dave Janoski is going to kind of get lost in the shuffle here. You're not going to see him until the end of the pattern. He was in the slot working man-to-man -man against the strong safety. Abdul McCullough, number nine. Nice little out route and a nice throw by Damon Heward for the six-pointer. Well, Bjorn Merton uh, missed his first two, made his third, but this is the fourth attempt at the end of the first half. Well, and you know as well as anybody, when you're struggling, just like in golf, you start trying to aim that shot, you know, instead of just going ahead and swinging the leg through and making the kick, it's a very mental position, and right now Bjorn Merton is uh, struggling a little bit. Missed from 40, 46, and 46. And this is one of the things I think that's, that's worth noting is that Merton is attempting a lot of field goals over 40 yards. Last year, he didn't really attempt that many past the 40-yard mark. But it's simply because the offense for UCLA has struggled somewhat this year as we take a look at halftime statistics. Well, and you can see UCLA really doing a pretty good job against this vaunted Washington defense, moving the football 207 total yards. They had 410 total yards last year in their big win, so they're pretty much right on schedule. They're winning the turnover battle, possessing the football. They only had one breakdown defensively, and that was that last possession, as you see. Did a great job playing defense. Uh, or that's UCLA's possession. Didn't take advantage of the field position early and then pretty much kind of stumbled through there the rest of the time until the last one uh, when they got the field goal. But then on defense, UCLA played very well against Washington until the last possession. Long drive by the Husky offense resulting in the touchdown. Yeah, 15-play drive there and the uh, touchdown pass to Janoski. 
And that's where we stand at 10-3 as we get set to uh, start the uh, second half. There's a couple of guys that have been at their respective schools for a long time. Jim Lambright, University of Washington, played at Washington, assistant coach for 26 years. Overall, Lambright, uh, 30 years at Washington. Donahue, 27 years at UCLA. Todd, both of those guys were defensive linemen in college back in the <laughs> mid-60s, about 190-pound category. It's only increased by about 100 pounds over the last 30 years. Well, you know, it's interesting because the game changed dramatically and went to much bigger players. Now it's kind of scaling it back and going back to smaller, faster guys. I don't know if those guys had the speed that the guys have now, but they, they have the same weight as a lot of the guys playing. I think if you'd ask them, they'd tell you they had the speed. <laughs> that was their key. As Merton gets set to kick it off, I think UCLA, though, has to feel pretty good about the, uh, the way they play. They missed the opportunities with the field goals, but nonetheless, only trailing by a touchdown as we start the second half. Leon Neal back there behind Rasheen Shaheed. As uh, Kaufman, we told you, went in uh, before the end of the first half. Got a shoulder problem as Neal will take it. And Leon Neal right up the middle and leans forward to the 30-yard line. So Leon Neal with a good return. And Washington will start it there first and 10. And Kaufman does come back out on the field, so that's one of the problems when you've got a good runner to try to use him on punt returns and kickoff returns. You take a lot of punishment to your body. Yeah, especially kickoff returns. I mean, that, that's really a, a situation where you got guys flying down the field. It, it's not very often you see a senior tailback returning kickoffs. That's usually reserved for the, yeah. the promising young freshman who's got a lot of speed and ability. But you don't see many senior Heisman Trophy candidates returning kickoffs. On first and ten, Kaufman's got it, and he's on the right side as he gets it to the 34-yard line. Let's check in with uh, Gary Reesons. Gary, how is uh, Kaufman feeling uh, after uh, getting some treatment at halftime? I saw him in the tunnel and talked to him a little bit. I asked him how his shoulder felt. He said he had a little trouble moving, and I asked him to lift his arm for me. He could lift it up, but you could see the pain was noticeable in his face. He's out there. He's a gutsy guy. Well, he doesn't have to throw any passes, hopefully, in the second half and just carry that ball and maybe he won't have any trouble with it. Well, his presence on the field is a, is a big plus for Washington. I mean, just when he's out there, the defense of UCLA has to make an account for him. Kaufman tries the left side, nothing there. Gary, did you get a chance to talk to uh, Terry Donahue? Yes, Roger, I did talk to Terry, and he was very pleased with how his UCLA Bruins played the first half. He said they just have to learn how to win. Just that simple. When they get opportunities to put points on the board, kick the field goals, he says his kicker has to make it. That's what they're looking to do this half. Roger? All right, thanks, Gary. You know, it'll be interesting to see what his confidence factor is as a head coach in his kicker in the second half. If this ball game stays close, does he make some decisions to go for it on fourth down here in the second half, trying to get touchdowns instead of relying on that field goal? Going well, third down and six, let's see if they can find Burner. He's been the third down man this year, but instead there's Bjornsson wide open and makes the catch at the 35-yard line where Paul Gidry came over to give him the big hit as Bjornsson had to slow down but had his man beat, and Bjornsson's been the go-to guy to get today for the Huskies. Yeah, I think everybody is expecting Bruner to be the guy that's going to get the throws, particularly on third down, but they're staying, keeping him in the block. Pretty good design. They're going to Bjornsson. They're going with the pump fake a couple times. You can see him working on Teddy Lawrence. Teddy Lawrence bit on the pump fake. They really worked him over on the outs. First play out of the box in the second half. They go out and up, and Bjornsson wide open. 32 yards in the pickup. You know, he's a better athlete than most quarterbacks on him. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10 from the 34. Kaufman up the middle. And Kaufman inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Good blocking in the middle there by Frank Garcia, Trevor Highfield, and Patrick Kessie. As Smalley and Jasper, the inside backers. The tackle by See that? Hey, Husky. See that guy behind you? Go grab his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Gary keeping his distance. Yeah, Gary's not getting close to that dog, is he? <laughs> Second down and four from the 28. First man through is Thomas. And he should be close to the first down. And with you know, you, a lot is made about halftime adjustments that coaches make. You know, what really goes on at halftime? Well, what we just saw a few minutes ago was an excellent example of that. In the first half, Washington got a lot of success out of throwing the out routes to Bjornsson. 
The first play, they threw the ball to him in the second half. They went out and up. They totally fooled the defensive corner, Teddy Lawrence, and got a big play. So that was a nice adjustment by offensive coordinator Bill Dietrich in the Washington locker room at halftime. First and 10, 24-yard line. Kaufman, big hole up the middle. Kaufman to the 15. Great job that time by the Washington offensive line and by Richard Thomas, the lead man coming through. And you can tell that Thomas is really hurting out there. Yeah, it looks a little bit like, I remember Emmett, Emmett Smith in a ball game last year against the Eagles had the separated shoulder but kept in the ball game and kept playing. And it was just tough getting up off the ground every single play, but uh, he wanted to stay in the ball game. And That's Shane Jasper, number 90 of UCLA, the man that's down at the 20-yard line being attended to by the Tuesday, trainers for UCLA. I see uh, Arizona playing Oregon State tonight. Uh, Washington and Arizona uh, haven't played here right. for two years, and uh, they'll get back to going at one another. Uh, Notre Dame putting the hurt on Stanford. Number 90, Shane Jasper is shaking up on the last play for the So that's the last thing UCLA needs is a, uh, a defensive player to be injured. You know, we mentioned some of the guys uh, from a year ago who could have played this year that are gone. Jameer Miller, Bruce Walker, uh, you know, some injuries. Uh, Marvin Goodwin, Wisconsin, 16th ranked, is uh, upset by Michigan State. Brian Ty, another guy who was injured uh, a year ago, not coming back. And uh, Washington State uh, down in Knoxville, uh, leading Tennessee 6 to nothing at halftime. I remember a few years ago, uh, Tim Rosenbaugh let him down there and they crushed the balls. And that would be a huge win for Mike Price and the Cougars. Still playing as C. Hewitt on the keeper. Running the option, gets to the 11-yard line on a second down and one where Chris Sanchez, 51, who has checked into the game in place of Shane Jasper, makes the tackle. They're doing a nice job setting up this option because they're, they're sending three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. They're forcing UCLA to shift a lot of their defense over to the wide receivers and then optioning back to the short side of the field. And Hewitt doing a nice job optioning the end man on the line of scrimmage. And so far, they forced him to carry the ball every time. They don't want him pitching it out to call First and 10 at the 11 yard line. Kaufman, off right tackle. Look at him. See that, that great balance that he had. He got hit at the line of scrimmage and he maintained his footing to get down to the six as Philip Ward was the first man that came through and busted him. Well, and the thing, too, did you see he never stopped moving his That's legs? Good. He kept churning his legs, churning his legs. It didn't look like it was going to amount to anything. Now watch. As Kaufman gets hit right about at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage, right there, watch him keep his legs moving. Keeps churning the legs, yeah, churning the legs, job. driving forward, kept his pads underneath the defensive pads, and, and it's a good positive game. 16 carries, 77 yards for Napoleon Kaufman. Second down. Thomas, first man through inside the five, down to the four. The ninth play of this drive for the Huskies with 10.33 to go, third quarter. Here's a look at Richard Thomas, 5'9 and 220. He's a great story. I mean, this kid has come in here and he's going to get his degree from Washington in about three and a half years in sociology. Then he's going to have a double major in history, his other major. Caught that big pass against Miami a week ago. Third down and three. Good chance the four to yard that line. option again now. Washington six of eight on third down possessions today. Kaufman will take it to the left side. Touchdown. Richard Thomas got in the block and the 27th career rushing touchdown for Napoleon Kaufman. Great block by Thomas and a great block by the backup tight end Ernie Conwell, number 82. They sealed the outside and Kaufman again shows that ability to bounce and to move laterally without losing speed and take it to the corner. Watch the blocking by Conwell, number 82. He's in the wing position. Bruner gets a good block. Conwell gets a good block. Here comes the fullback around. He gets a block. Three great blocks at the point of attack and nobody even lays a finger on Napoleon Kaufman. And his shoulder didn't seem to be hurting at that moment. <laughs> Wales to attempt the point after. High snap. Bjornsson brings it down. I'll tell you what, Bjornsson does a lot of things awfully yep, well, doesn't he? Sure he? does. That's the second one today yeah. that he's had to make a tough catch on. 9.59 to go third. Huskies lead at 17-3. UCLA. 
doesn't look to be. Anyway, if Washington continue to crank out drives like they just did, 10 plays, nine of them running. Plays, yeah. Todd. 39 yards on nine rushes. They got the one big pass play, though, the out and up to Bjornsson for 32 yards. But that's exactly what you want to see out of your ball club when you come out of the tunnel at halftime. Take the football, go right down the field, and stick it in the end zone. Five minutes and one second off the clock. An excellent offensive drive for Washington. Wales to kick it off. And Ayers, 25 is met at the 25-yard line, and the big pile pushes him forward to the 29-yard line. Scott Greenlaw, once again, number 10, one of the first men down on the special team's coverage. And UCLA has really got to get something together here now with 9.52 to go on the third quarter. Well, I talked about you don't want Napoleon Kaufman necessarily returning kickoffs, but watch the guys flying down. Here's Parrish running down. He's kind of the headhunter for Washington. Getting his nose in there. You got guys that, that they live for that. They want to fly down and stick their nose in and look for make the big hit on the kickoff team. That's, that's, a, that's a dangerous world down there returning kickoffs. I'll tell you what. Cook's checking off at the line of scrimmage. Milliner was up there, couldn't hear him. First and ten. Shaw. Shaw to the 31-yard line, where he's met by David Kilpatrick and Ink Aliaga. That's an interesting set of inside linebackers. Ink Aliaga from Honolulu, Kilpatrick from Anchorage, Alaska. Second down. Give a little geography lesson there, Todd. <laughs> yeah. About as far away as you can get there. You've never been to Alaska, have you? No, I have not. You've been to Hawaii? Yes, I have. Good for you. <laughs> Second and eight. This guy's from Ohio, man. You gotta, you know, get him out of there every once in a while. Shaw again, and Shaw close to the first down at the 39-yard line where Deke Devers, 43, and Donovan Schmidt, number 52, are there on the tackle. I'll tell you, Shaw shows you, some, shows you a little bit of flash, doesn't he? I'll tell you what, they ran that play that earlier in the first half where they pulled Jonathan Ogden out in front to kind of lead that play, and I'll tell you what, he's a, he can move really well. 315 pounds, look at the left part of your screen. Number 79 is going to pull all the way across the formation, and Shaw's going to get right in his hip pocket. Look at the big 300 pounder out there gets the block and that all you have to do is just put his hands out there knocks Russell Harrison straight back onto his back that's the power of that left tackle Jonathan Ogden I'll tell you also Chad Sauter 74 made a nice block there he is starting his first game uh, as a collegiate player in that banged up offensive line and that was enough for the first down for the uh, Bruins of UCLA you saw Donovan Schmidt uh, leave the field number 52 for the Huskies Looked like he might have turned an ankle. Yeah, I think I think right now UCLA needs to try to mix in some more passes on first down. They, that was their 18th first down play uh, a moment ago. It was their 16th running play. They only threw the ball twice on first down in the first half. I think they need to try to open it up a little bit more on first down, try to get some bigger chunks of yardage on the early downs. On first and 10 from the 39, out of the shotgun is Wayne Cook. They brought in Eddie Ayers, and they split him out to the far side. They're trying to go to Jordan underneath. Now, Ayers is wide open out there. Boy, that was a nice little route as Ayers gets it down to the 37-yard line with Moyer and Malloy. They faked that screen underneath, yeah. Todd. Well, everybody was focused on Jordan. A nice play call. One of those uh, plays that you put in to run one time. Everybody's looking for Jordan underneath. They take the running back and run him on the deep route. Gets behind the defense. Right there you can see everybody was looking at number four, and Ayers was able to slip out to the outside and make the big play. And Cook got hit. Yeah, it kind of, Devers pulled up a little. 24 yards in this reception, just the third pass reception for Derek Ayers this year. First and 10 from the 37-yard line. Cook blowing on the run. Looked like... Josh Eby was the man he wanted to get to, but it was David Kilpatrick putting a lot of pressure on him. So, you know, Cook uh, had been sacked 12 times coming into this game and been uh, roughed up on a number of occasions. Well, That's Washington all, State. Look at all those purple jerseys in the box, in the, in the area between the two offensive tackles. You can see them all lined up in there. Now, Cook's going to make the play fake and try to roll out here. There's just too many purple jerseys in there. You see 
They got a free run at him. Kilpatrick has a straight shot to run to him. And Willie Cook does a nice job just getting rid of the football, not taking the sack right there and giving yourself a chance on second down. Well, he got a sack seven times by Washington State last week as UCLA faces a second and ten. And Cook throws it once again, hurried up and throwing it to the near side. Ayers was the intended receiver. Ayers' uh, dad, Eddie, played at uh, UCLA from 73 to 75 and in the 76 Rose Bowl for our colleague Dick Vermeil. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good football team. You know, Cook right there, he tried to step up in the pocket to buy himself some time, but he never got his feet reset. You know, he, he shuffled up in the pocket. You just got to really try to get your feet reset so you can get something on that football. He had a throwing lane, but he really didn't have his feet up, up underneath him, and he didn't have enough on the ball. The ball landed way short of his receiver. Third down and 10 from the 37. Once again, Cook having to move, and once again, hurried, and once again, Ink Aliaga, 54, was a man who was applying the pressure as Mike Wynn was the intended receiver. So they're trying to give Wayne Cook every opportunity to get rid of the football in a hurry. I mean, they, they've gone on quick counts, uh, yeah. trying to run some quick outs, quick, just some sort of quick plays. And he's not a sitting duck back there, but now the Washington pressure is becoming a little bit more intense. And they're going to get to you. That's why you've got to do a better job on first down so that you only have six or, you know, five, six yards to try to get on third down so you don't have to hold the ball as long. When you're trying to get 10 yards all the time, you've got to hold the football a little bit longer. Uh, Shager hit what appeared to be almost a perfect punt, but the player down there for UCLA Tompkins, number 20, could not down it. And they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line where the Huskies will have it with 8.16 to go into third. You buy Chevrolet, the cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day, genuine Chevrolet. And Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Roger Twibel and Todd Blackledge, Gary Reasons down on the sidelines as Washington now leads UCLA 17 to 3. We've got 8-16 to go in the third quarter as Damon Hewitt, the junior from Puyallup, brings the Huskies up to the line. That's Conwell. Nobody's out. Way out to the right side. They back up tight end, but they give it to Kaufman. Now he's going to try to run it outside. He's got a block. He's got the corner. It's a foot race. He's got to beat Teddy Lawrence. Cuts it to the inside. Kaufman, one more. Can't get it. Brought down at the one-yard line by Teddy Lawrence. Seventy-nine yards. And you wondered what was going on when Conwell split way out there, and that's what the UCLA defense wondered, Tom. Well, I'll tell you what, this was a bizarre play because they took the tight end Conwell and flanked him out as a wide receiver, and the defense was very confused with that formation. Well, nobody covered Conwell, so he decided to come in and get a block. Watch Kaufman bounce to the outside. There's the block on Andy Colbert, number 10. Conwell got that, and then it's a foot race. Napoleon Kaufman doesn't get caught in too many situations like this, but he had to make the cut back across the field, and credit UCLA for keeping him out of the end zone, but a great effort by Napoleon Kaufman. First and goal, Thomas, the first man through, and the UCLA defense comes up and stops him. You know, I cannot stress enough the ability that Kaufman has to bounce at the line of scrimmage and move laterally without losing speed. Well, the crowd wants him back in, and he's coming back in. He scored three touchdowns this year, 27 in his illustrious career. And, you know, throughout his career, he split some time with Beano Bryant, and it, it wasn't like he was playing all the time. Last year really came into his own on second and goal from the one. Hewitt, can he get outside? He can't. What a great defensive play by Andy Colbert, number 10, to bring him down for a loss of four. I'll tell you what, this was a bootleg. It was a run-pass option. Hewitt thought he could run it in, but had he looked upfield, he would have seen his tight end. Bruner was wide open. Watch Murray fakes the block, and then he's going to slip into the backfield. No defender around him. He was wide open for the touchdown. Hewitt thought he could run it in, couldn't get to the corner. 
Yeah, that uh, Damon Heward's got that Todd Blackler speed to the outside. <laughs> 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 Gotta look for that tight end. And throw the ball. Hey, Bruner hasn't caught a touchdown pass this year yet. Third and goal from the five. Now he's going to look the corner of the end zone, and it's not there. Bjornsson was the intended receiver, and Colbert, yeah. And told him up. You know, and Colbert really had a rough afternoon today going against Bjornsson, but that time he made a great play cutting him off. He forced Bjornsson to go out of his pattern, and, and it delayed the pattern, and that's a timing route all the way. It's two steps back, throw the ball to the corner, but Bjornsson couldn't get there. Watch Colbert at the top of the screen, the cornerback number 10. Much smaller man, gets a little bit of a jam, disrupts the timing, and Bjornsson never can get outside to where the football is. Nice play by Colbert. Wales will attempt the 22-yard field goal out of the hold of Bjornsson. And it's good. So Wales has made two today from 47 and 22 yards. And with 6.08 to go, third quarter, the big run by Kaufman sets up the field goal, and the Huskies lead the Bruins by 17. If Washington owns the record for the longest unbeaten streak. For 63 games from 1907 to 1917, the Huskies, or Sun Dodgers as they were known, never lost a game. Well, we're dodging that sun today, aren't we? Yeah. It's dodging us, I think. Well, Napoleon Kaufman. A big run down to the one-yard line, and the uh, Huskies end up with the field goal as Wales is set to kick it off. Ayers and McElroy back deep. That's at the 50. What's the signal? Washington got it. That was Parrish. Tony Parrish, number seven. You know, I saw Washington practicing this on Thursday. Now, yeah. they did this against Ohio State. When you see a team on their kickoff return that has a tendency to maybe fly out of there to get back and set the return, you tried a little onside kick. Look, Wales is actually going to try to recover this himself. You want to let that ball go 10 yards, get your first line down there to keep UCLA away from the football, and then go to recover it. Really, that's a, a situation where you take advantage of that front line that's turning their head and running back to get set up for a return. And uh, You know, that's really heads-up play by the coaching staff over yep. there for Washington. They, they saw UCLA cheating back, and it uh, looked like Jensen might have been the first man to fall on it for the Huskies, and they've got it back. Now, this could be a real backbreaker for the Bruins. First and 10, 49-yard line. Heward on the play action. And Janowski with the catch, and he's to the 31-yard line. Tomorrow night on ABC, an hour of family fun with America's Funniest Home Videos and our own, followed by Lois and Clark. Then Tracy Gold stars in a world premiere movie based on the true story of a family's struggle with anorexia. For the love of Nancy, that's tomorrow night on ABC. So Janowski with the touchdown reception today. Another catch just then came into this game with only three catches this year as Kaufman tries to find something up the middle. And number 59, George Psycho Case was there on the case. This guy shaved his eyebrows in preseason. Todd, you ever know anybody that did that? I mean, a lot of guys do crazy things in two days, but that's one I've never heard of. That's different. George Case in there working Shave. against the center, Frank Garcia. That's uh that's two pretty nasty guys going at each other, nose to nose, play after play down there in the pit. And uh, I tell you what, you got to have a you have a have a different attitude to play down there at nose guard because you're getting double teamed all the time, people flying at your legs, and never do you really get a clear picture of what's going on. And it's uh, that's a rough position. On second and nine, Kaufman can't break free, gets maybe a couple of yards. Not much room there in the middle. Travis Kersky, 98, a sophomore from Yorba Linda, was there on the tackle. You know, Washington, through the 90s, along with UCLA, have been the top teams as far as records go. Washington, 40 and 10 in the 90s. UCLA, 30 and 19. And Cal, the other team, 31, 18 and 1. And that's who UCLA will meet next week in Berkeley. some pressure up the middle trying to get outside now he just throws the ball away Incomplete. and guess who was there Donnie Edwards 23 and Abdul McCullough number nine were the guys 
coming in to give Heward a bad time. Well, UCLA knows that it's, it's getting down to uh, do or die time, really, in this ball game for their football team. Taking a few chances on defense, came with a blitz that time and was able to really disrupt the timing of Damon Heward. Didn't let him get his feet set at all. He was backing up completely from the time that play started. So nice job choosing when to blitz, and Donnie Edwards putting a good pressure there. 47-yard attempt by John Wales. And no good. So the uh, onside kick completed by Washington doesn't result in any points. But it gives UCLA obviously something to think about the next time Washington kicks it off. So with 4.14 left to go third quarter, the Huskies uh, leading the Bruins 20-3. to You know, the other thing that that says to your football team, if you're a Washington Husky, when you go for that onside kick like that, you're telling that your team that you have an awful lot of confidence in your defense, too, because if you don't recover that onside kick, you're giving them the football at about the 50-yard line. You're telling your defense, hey, I know you can come out and make the stop if we don't recover this. First and 10, 29-yard line. Throws it, and it's short. Intended receiver Kevin Jordan. And let's check in with John Saunders. John? If that was a football or a helmet <laughs> flying in the end zone there. Second down and 10 after that incompleted pass. Shaw trying the middle. Not much there at all. 97, David Ritchie, the backup nose tackle, and David Kilpatrick, 35, there to make the tackle. You know, in... 93, UCLA led the Pac-10 in scoring offense, 32 points a game. Todd, so far this year, they're last in the Pac-10, averaging less than 16 points a game. Today, they've only got three. Yeah, well, a big part of that is the fact that their best player on offense, J.J. Stokes, has not really been able to play since the opening ball game. And, I mean, he is a prime-time player, a guy that was the leading returning vote getter in the Heisman Trophy race last year. On third and five, Cook going deep and just off the outstretched hands of Kevin Jordan. Not a bad pass right there. Jordan looked like he had a chance to catch it and just couldn't get to it. Scott Greenlaw was back there on the coverage, and that'll bring up a punting situation for the Bruins of UCLA. There you see what happened in 93, the uh, points per game, and in 94, and hey, look, a big part of that, no question, is J.J. Stokes. I mean, he had a huge game against Washington right. a year ago. Ten catches, four touchdowns, 195 yards, and that's hard to replace. Shager. Nice punt. And Neal takes it at the 25. Penalty marker is down as Neal runs back to the 21-yard line where he is tackled back there by Javelin Gidry. I've been waiting all day <laughs> to say that name. That's my favorite name in college football right now. 41-yard punt and minus four on the return. So good job by the punter Shager and the coverage team for UCLA and the penalty flag down over on the far side. And the penalty is going to be against Washington. You know, it's interesting that the Bruins, as the penalty has stepped off against Washington, is the least penalized team uh, in the Pac-10. And I'm curious your thoughts on that. If you're a real good, good football team and you don't make penalties, that's one thing. But when you're not such a good football team and you don't make a lot of penalties, does that tell you that maybe you're not aggressive enough? Well, I think sometimes it does. It, a lot of it depends on what kind of penalties, too, because if you've got a lot of penalties that are mental penalties, you know, like illegal motion or offsides or those things, those are the ones that really hurt you, the ones that you really can't deal with. So if you have some penalties for the over-aggressive penalties, penalties that, that come maybe a late hit downfield or extra hit on the sideline for being aggressive, that's different. Neal off the right side and can't come up with anything. Well, hey, Gary, did you make friends with that dog down there? Sorry about that, boys. I forgot the microphone. I've made friends here, Roger. This is King Readout. It's the eighth Alaskan Malamud Husky. Mascot for the for the team here in Washington. Hey, this guy is really nice. <laughs> he wants that little treat that girl has over there. It's not me. He's I, also very good in the community here. He works for the D.A.R.E. program here in Seattle. A little tired today, but overall, a great animal. Second down. Thanks, Gary. That's a big dog. I'll tell you what, that, that looks as much like more like a wolf than it does a dog. <laughs> wow. 
second down, 11 yards to go at the Husky 9. I wonder if uh, Gary was a little nervous. Uh, he forgot to turn on his mic because he had that dog sitting there next to him. <laughs> I wouldn't make any quick moves around no, the dog either. either. I, very he, slowly he was afraid reached to, to reach the back there. Wasn't he? Hewitt, at second down. You see, there was a situation right there where he was trying to get the ball into Bruner, and the coverage was by Andy Colbert. And you talked about decision-making by quarterbacks, and we've seen a couple here today, the interception earlier and then the one where he decided not to throw it in the end zone. Well, watch. You're going to see Colbert pass off Bjornsson and then step right in front of Bruner. A nice job by Colbert reading the quarterback's eyes, and what happens in a situation like that, Hewitt just kind of gets locked in. We used to call that radar lock, and the ball really got away from you can see he didn't have a good spire on him. It was a high throw. Very lucky that that ball was not intercepted. When you throw in the middle of the field, you can't throw the ball high. Third and long, and they give it to Thomas as he moves out to about the 13-yard line. Grady Stretz, 77, was the uh, first man to come up to meet him. And that'll bring up a punting situation. So a good job by the uh, Bruin defense. You know, really, I mean... You take out the drive right at the end of the half by Washington and then the first drive of the third quarter, and UCLA's defense has really played good football today, but a couple of drives that they just really didn't Wait. get the plays made, and, and credit Washington. I mean, they, they took the ball and, so and, and did what they had to if do. If you take out those two drives, they've played pretty good defense. Is that what you're telling no, me? No, I think they've played better okay. defense today than... Because you have to count those two drives. You know that. Yes, you do. Prince, the punter, sends it down, and the uh, fair catch made by Guidry. And want to remind you, got a lot of uh, college football coming up next Saturday at, for Washington and UCLA. That 6.8 is really a good number. That means your third down conversions are going to be a lot better for you when you're averaging almost seven yards on first down. Shaw, good pick up there as he gets about six as we're under two minutes remaining in the third quarter. Looks like uh, Cook might have checked off uh, at the line of scrimmage on that play. Good field position here now for the Bruins. Yeah, and they're going to the to the no huddle offense again. It's not necessarily a hurry up offense as much as it is call plays at the line of scrimmage. Try to keep the defense in a in a, a more vanilla set. A lot of pressure on the center, Mike Flanagan, to make sure that snap is good. As Cook with a good rifle arm right there finds Mike Wynn on the near side. So Mike Wynn, the senior from Portland, Oregon, with his 64th career catch. And you know what Wayne Cook did there that he hadn't done here in the last couple throws? He really got back, set his feet, and made a nice throw. He's, he's been getting a little bit too anxious to get rid of the football, not getting his feet set. That time he stayed right in the pocket and made the nice, strong throw to the outside. First and 10, 29-yard line. Cook once again checking off at the line of scrimmage. Washington and Shaw the running backs. He's got his man, Kevin Jordan, and Jordan is inside the 15 to the 13-yard line, and let's send it to New York and John Saunders. John? John, keep following the progress of that game. One way you attack a very aggressive defense is with misdirection, reverses like that. UCLA tried one reverse in this ball game. It was stopped for a big loss by Washington. On first and 10, going for the end zone. Touchdown, UCLA. UCLA. Derek Ayers with the touchdown reception. Lamar Lyons was there on the coverage and a perfect throw by Wayne Cook. Yeah, and those were the three best throws that he's put together in this ball game. And all three of them, he stayed right there. Good, solid work by his footwork in the pocket. Watches nice and st stands tall, makes the nice throw to the corner of the end zone. And that ball is absolutely perfect. And you can only make that throw if you're relaxed in the pocket. And you can see Wayne Cook that time, very relaxed, dropped that ball right over the shoulder for six. First touchdown reception of the year for Ayers. He had come into this game with just two catches, and he's made a couple of nice grabs as Merton attempts a point after and nails it. And so with 45 seconds left to go here in the third quarter, the Bruins have cut it to a 10-point game, and more than that have scored their first touchdown in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, big confidence boost for Wayne Cook. You know, we, we talked to Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator, midweek this week, and he said Wayne Cook was really kind of in the tank mentally after that game at Washington State. It was his worst career game. He got sacked seven times. He got replaced, and, and he kind of worked his way out of it towards the end of the week, and, and, and he's played pretty well here. That was his best series of the ball game by far. Todd, we've seen a 
terrific performance so far today by Napoleon Kaufman. And, of course, we talked about the Heisman at the top, and he's one of the players at the forefront. And the Heisman watch with Tommy Frazier, Nebraska, injured, didn't play this week. Stokes is injured. Wheatley has been injured, isn't back. Steve McNair is supposed to play today. He got injured last week. And those were some of the front runners. And then some of the other players who are indeed playing today, Dean Kaufman, Sandstrom, what have they done today? Well, Terry Dean, four touchdowns, three interceptions. You see Napoleon Kaufman at halftime had just 52 yards, but he's up to 160 now. Stenstrom, not much happening there for him against Notre Dame. And Cordell Stewart, who has come into contention right. uh, against Texas today, not doing much. And Zaire and McNair playing later on. And I would like <laughs> to just make a case for a guy named Stoney down at New Mexico. Second in the nation in total offense behind Zaire, 329 yards per game. And he's thrown for 300 yards per game, six in the nation, 11 touchdown passes. And we saw him throw six last week against BYU. So uh, we'll just, we'll, we'll, if you want to have a real long shot, there's one for you, folks. Yeah, maybe the, the best player in the country that, that most folks won't get a chance to see. Exactly. But we saw him last week, and he is a special player. Being a former Nittany Lion, I, I have to throw in there Kajana Carter because he's a guy that really is, is playing some great football as the tailback for Penn State, a team that's undefeated and, and very much in contention for the national championship also. Well, it's going to be an interesting race because it's really wide open now. We've got a lot of players coming back for injury. A lot of things can happen late in the year. and uh, But I think, you know, Kaufman, he's got to be one of the guys right yeah. there at the top. I mean, another good day for him here today. By the way, that uh, touchdown reception by Ayers, his first career touchdown reception. And with 45 seconds to go, third quarter, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. And Kaufman's got it. And on the right side will get himself about four yards. Kaufman, the ball carrier. So the Huskies on the having rushed for nearly 200 yards so far today, and the Bruins having passed for nearly 200, and total yardage just about even. Huskies with about 330, and the Bruins with 293. The offensive linemen love blocking for a guy like Kaufman because they know that at any time he can bust the big play. With his ability to make some people miss in that explosion, they know if they stay on their blocks, he can make some big things happen. And he's going to come up just short of the first down at the 29-yard line. That's going to be the last play of the third quarter from Husky Stadium. In Seattle, Washington, we'll return with more action between UCLA and Washington after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The yeah, cloud cover has broken up somewhat. The Cascades there in the distance. Uh, not many sights better than this from a college football stadium. Todd. Now, this is a beautiful place. My first trip up here. I, of course, I came up here when I played for the Chiefs and played in the King Dome, but it, the scenery is a little bit different inside the dome than it is out here. Well, on third and one, Hewer just kept it. They've got the first down to the 31-yard line. And, of course, you know, Husky football has been well supported through the years. I mean, they've got some of the best fans in all of college football. They led the Pac-10 in attendance in 93, averaged better than 71,500 a game, even while they were on probation. And uh, that outpaced the uh, USC and UCLA, who both averaged around 59 and 50. So this has been one of the, uh, uh, the best supported football programs on the West Coast for many years. And today's attendance in the rain, 71,851. On first and ten from the 31-yard line. Hoffman's got it. There's a hole. You see, he runs in inside just as well as outside. We talked about his strength, but he's he's got a 36-inch vertical leap. He's got that great burst. As we take a look at the stats from the third quarter. Well, the rushing yard, really the one that's starting to to take effect for Washington, 197. Of course, a, a big chunk of that on the long run by Napoleon Kaufman there in the third quarter, but starting to kind of take control of the game. You can see the possession time, 25 minutes, 37 seconds for Washington, starting to establish the ground game. Napoleon Kaufman, very durable. You know, not only is he strong, durable, gets better as the game goes on. They put Herter and Conwell on the far side, and that means Kaufman will run it over that way, and he is close to the first down at the 41-yard line. George Kate. 59 was out there to make the tackle. Kaufman, 24 carries for 180 yards so far today. Well, both these tight ends for Washington, they're going to a lot more to tight end stuff, and, and both of them are very good blockers. Conwell, a big, strong guy, has the strongest bench press of anybody on the football team. And Bruner, we know he's the, the best or the leading receiver on this football team, but 
Jim Lambright said, you know, he, he loves to block just as much as, as he likes to catch passes. He's got a real nasty attitude about him, likes to block and, and get the big flat back block uh, as well as catch the big reception. And on third and less than a yard, they give it to the fullback, Richard Thomas, 5'9 and 220 pounds, and he has got it. So the Huskies now using the clock. They're going to stay on the ground. They have rushed for over 200 yards today. And you know, the interesting thing is when they played Miami, you take a look at a, a good one going on down in, in Austin right now between Colorado and Texas. But when they played Miami last week, everybody talked about the heat and humidity that it would take its effect on Washington. But this is a very well-conditioned football team. In the fourth quarter of that game, the same thing happened. The running game, the offensive line took control and they started knocking Miami players out of the ball game. They were strong in the fourth quarter. And a lot of those first stringers for Miami are not used to playing in the fourth quarters. Kaufman's got it and close to another first down. A penalty marker, a penalty marker goes down as Kaufman got it to the 46-yard line. Quick burst there by Napoleon Kaufman. I, I've been really impressed with him. Uh, you know, we'll get a chance here to uh, check in with Gary Reasons. Gary played with a guy with the New York Giants about the same size as Kaufman. I, I'd be interested in the uh, similarities between uh, Kaufman and Dave Meggett. But the, uh, well, I played with a guy in, in, in Penn State named Kurt Warner who played out here for the Seahawks. And, and, and Kaufman reminds me of Kurt in his ability Holding. to move laterally. Offense. 10-yard penalty, still first down. Jerry, what do you think? Uh, does, does Kaufman remind you of Megan at all? Do they do, they do things uh, a lot alike? Yes, he does. Kaufman has the ability that, like Dave does, gets out in the open field, makes a lot of people miss. I like him also to a guy like Terry Metcalf. Very quick feet. But what he has that Terry doesn't is power. He does have that. On first and 17, they will swing it out. And a bad pass there by Hewitt. And you saw that score, Colorado and Texas. Let's check in with John Saunders. John? Well, we saw Texas early in the year without Pinkney. Right. He's one of the biggest wide receivers in college football. Yeah, he's 6'5 and 235. He could line up as a tight end or a wide receiver. And, you know, J.J. Stokes, another guy like that, a 6'5 guy, a guy who can break tackles and make big plays after the catch. That was a great run after the catch by Pinkney. Martin. Second and 17, they get it to Kaufman, and he is nailed Chris Sanchez. A junior from Santa Barbara came up to make the tackle. I want to remind you once again on ABC's Monday night. Barry Foster's healthy. They can really run the football. I mean, he is a talented tailback. Well, Notre Dame has beaten Stanford 34-15 there in the final. Washington 9 to 14 in third down situations. This is along with third and 15. Kaufman can't get a thing. Abdul McCullough was there to make the tackle. I'll tell you, the UCLA coaches are really high on the sophomore from Oceanside, California. This is how intense and tough this kid is. When Nebraska was beating UCLA by a good margin back in Nebraska, they pulled the starters out of the game late. And when it got close to that 50-point mark, McCullough went to the coach and said, put me back in. I don't want him scoring 50. And they put him back in. That's the type of kid, that's the type of intensity he has on the football field. And, well, the UCLA defense obviously uh, playing better today. They have not uh, played well so far this year. Last in the Pac-10 in those categories. They're and saying his knee was down. Yeah, they're saying his knee's down. The whistle's blowing that punt situation. Yep. And what a break for UCLA. He Jeff went, Prince, the sophomore from Long Beach, California. Take a look now. He's going to go down the field the low snap. And watch. His left knee is on the ground as he catches the ball. Uh, he didn't have possession. Huh? First and ten at the Husky Questionable whether he had complete possession, but he's got to know better than to put his knee down on the ground to begin with. And that's just a situation that he, he can't do that. Well, nonetheless, the call is that the knee was down. Possession goes to... UCLA first and 10 at the 18-yard line, 11.07 left to go. That's Evie, the tight end in motion. That's Cook's going to get it to Jordan. 
And he has stopped at the 12-yard line. Big time hit by Lawyer Malloy. You know what? And if Lawyer Malloy doesn't make that tackle, it's a touchdown because Jordan saw the end zone, and he actually had a nice lane to the end zone, but Malloy ran right through a block. They had an offensive lineman out there on the receiver screen to pick up Malloy. Malloy, with great speed and pursuit, made a, a touchdown-saving tackle. Jordan, six receptions, 70 yards, second down and three. Can UCLA do on this day what they did in 1990? And there were three touchdown underdogs and upset second rank Washington. Cook looking the end zone. The intended receiver, Brian Adams, and the coverage there by Reggie Reeser. Reeser out of Pasadena, California. A lot of players in this Washington team from Southern California. A lot of these kids played against each other in high school. Tell you what, you got to have a lot of confidence as an individual to play as much man-to-man -man as the corners are asked to play here at Washington. And Reggie Reeser, I mean, teams just get tired of trying to go at him because he just he just doesn't give up any plays. He's been playing like that all year for this Washington defense. Looks from the outside down at three. They'll hand it off. Miller inside the ten, down to the eight, very close to the first down. Lamar Lyons was there James to make the Miller tackle, the and carrier. it depend on the spot. Now let's go back yards. to that attempted punt by the Washington Huskies and uh, Jeff Lions Prince. The now the ruling is you have to have possession if your knee is down. Now does he? His knee's down. Does he have possession? The knee comes up. I no. He didn't have possession no, didn't. when his knee was on the ground. I mean that that should have been called that he, that it was a, a good catch. To go. Went down there to protect himself to make the catch of the ball, but did not have possession. Fourth down and inches. The opponents of Washington, one of six on fourth down attempts this year. Now Cook changing signals. Uh, block is down to two. Shaw's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Richie Chambers. Well, the mistake there, Roger, is that on fourth and inches, you don't want to audible. Call a play in the huddle, come up to the line of scrimmage, give your guys the best chance to execute the play, get your offensive lineman to get a push. He's trying to audible. Nobody was really on the same page. You could see that that play was not all the players picked up the same audible. It never had a chance, and Richie Chambers made the play behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, on fourth and inches, you want to just get up, snap the ball and, and it's just the best man win the best team's going to win in a situation like that you don't make an audible and confuse your football team on the line of scrimmage so the washington defense comes up big as kaufman's got it kaufman picks across the 20 to the 24 yard line first down gidry and mccullough were there to make the tackle and the noise the deafening noise here at husky stadium played a big factor in that fourth down play yeah, it's, it certainly did. I mean, it was fourth down play. The crowd was in a frenzy. You're trying to audible on the line of scrimmage, and obviously not everybody on the UCLA offense picked it up. Not everybody heard what Cook was asking. Gary, what about that noise down on the field? It is deafening down here. The noise is very loud. I'm here behind the offensive line of UCLA. They could not hear the audible. That was the problem. They had some guys doing one play, some another. So when they got mis they got bad communication on that play. And a bad play, and Chambers made the tackle. And, oh, man, I'll tell you, Hoffman, excuse me, Napoleon Kaufman got nailed, and he is still down on the ground. London Woodfin, number 66, one of the men there. Let's get you to New York and John Saunders. John? Well, I just, Boy, I'll tell you, look at Terry Donahue. Is he upset? It's got to be. I mean, you, you got a golden opportunity. You yep. get a big break like that. You get it down that close on fourth down. As uh, Colorado has now moved ahead of Texas 24-21 in the third quarter, we have got nine minutes left to go here. Second down and 12 for Washington at the 22-yard line. Once again, those two tight ends are to the far side, Conway and Bruner. And they run that way. Kaufman can he cut it out. Look at him dart. Look at him dash. Kaufman out of bounds with the first down at the 35-yard line. Richard Thomas got him the breakaway block over there. 
And again, the ability of Napoleon Kaufman to change directions and to make cuts without losing speed. Now take a look at the block. Bruner's going to get on Edwards. Edwards helps him out by taking an inside charge, runs himself right out of the play, and then on the outside, Kaufman, just the ability to dart in and out, make quick cuts without losing speed, picks up the first down. Kaufman now, 30 carries, 203 yards. It's his third career game over 200. His career high earlier this year against Ohio State of 211. And I'll tell you what, he is moving up the Heisman ladder. Yeah, he's enhancing it as he goes here in this ball game. Tight ends to the right side, to the near side this time. And Neal will bust it off the left side, and there's nothing there. Philip Ward, 97. The outside backer from Compton, California, came up to make the... You know, he had to upset his mom when he went to UCLA. She's a librarian at Southern Cal. <laughs> huh? Of course, then again, she'd expect him to be in the library all the time if he went to USC, right? Yeah, you got to get away from home, I guess. Second and nine from the 36. Leon Neal remains in the game at tailback. He gets the football. On the right side. Look at him being pushed ahead. Look at him being pushed. He's still going to the 46-yard line. I'll tell you what, give a bow, give a hand to Trevor Highfield, 79, because instead of leading the way blocking, he was behind him pushing. Well, 79 Highfield and number 60 Andrew Peterson, both just downfield, just flying into the pile. Watch now the blocking on the right side of your screen at the bottom as they run the sprint draw. Now, here comes Neal. Now, as long as nobody's going to tackle him, he's just going to keep going. There's Highfield just pushing the pile. Here's Peterson pushing the pile. Bruner pushing the pile. Everybody just pushing bodies, and Neal just keeping his legs moving and picking up more yardage. If you're not going to tackle him, he's not going to go down. It was a scrum and not a run. <laughs> and we've got an injured player. It appears to be George Case, the nose guard for the Bruins. There's George. See any eyebrow? There's no hair. I mean, he shaved everything. <laughs> Nose guard mentality. So Case is able to uh, walk off the field under his own power. And with 740 left to go, the Huskies lead it by 10. And uh, head coach Jim Lambright getting his offense to get a drive together as Kaufman has come back into the game. First and 10 at the 46. Heward checking off at the line of scrimmage. UCLA really crowding the line of scrimmage. Look at this hole. Kaufman inside the 40 now is pulled back. The tackle by Paul Gidry. And a good pickup of about 13 yards. Well, obviously, UCLA knows that Washington is going to try to run the football. They're crowding the line of scrimmage. And again, if you can pop through the initial line of defense, you can get right into the secondary and make some plays. And again, you see the strength of Napoleon Kaufman using that right arm as a stiff arm. Nice tackle by Gidry, but Kaufman, very tough man to bring down. Even though he's not the, the biggest running back in the country, he's a very, very strong back. Washington's rush for 245 yards, 217 of those by Napoleon Kaufman. That is a new career high. 31 carries, 217 yards, and it's first and 10 from the 40. Leon Neal, got the tight end. Conwell out in front of him, and Neal gets it down to the 25-yard line. And Conwell looked like a pulling guard that time. 16 yards. Conwell is the strongest player on the Washington football team. And want to remind you next Saturday on ABC Sports at 95 yard line, 6.30, left to go. Right now is a good time to maybe try to put this one out of reach. Go play action and throw the football. Kaufman up the middle inside the 20 to the 19, and would you throw it to Bruner maybe? Yeah, I mean, you basically used him as a decoy for the most part of this game, using him blocking more than uh, throwing the football to him. Now might be a good time to slip him in there. 
Well, you know, Gary Reasons was an intense football player when he played with the Giants. And uh, Mr. Intensity, George Case, was just injured. How's he doing, Gary? Roger, he certainly has some soreness in his knee. He's trying to walk it out over here. The doctor said his knee was very stable, but obviously he's in pain. Questionable whether he's going to return. I think he would if he could. Roger. Thanks, Gary. There's uh, George Case trying to put some weight on that right knee. Second down and four from the 19. Kaufman now 223 yards rushing today. He's got it one more time. And those are hard yards. You know, Todd, that's a great run. He gets it down to the 15. Should be enough for the first down. But that's the thing. When you're 5'9 and 180, you don't expect a guy that size to get that kind of yardage. You know, one thing that, that, that Kaufman does, as well as, you know, the first thing he does is he has that ability to make the quick cuts without losing speed. The, the ability to plant one foot and quickly go in another direction. And he really has that good feel of when to look lower his shoulder pads and get get more yardage after contact we talked about his strength but you also have to know when to, to use leverage when to get your pads underneath the defenders pads and he really has a good feel for when it's time to lower that shoulder and make the play five minutes left to go Huskies lead by 10 third and one Buell on the option can he outrun somebody and he runs out of bounds at the 11 yard line they got the first down. On those third and short yardage situations, we see a lot of this option from Washington. Yeah, watch Heward elude Edwards. Makes the fake again. Now, Edwards just trips, trying to go to cover the pitch. Heward's done a nice job faking the pitch and then keeping the football. You can see Kaufman gets a lead block. As soon as he sees that Heward's going to turn up and go ahead and run it, he slips in front of him to try to get a block. George Case is uh, going to rest it. And his Bruin uh, teammates got their hands full. 4.52 left to go in this game. 10 plays, 77 yards so far on this drive, all on the ground, and it's consumed over five minutes as Hewitt will pitch it to Kaufman, who's upended at the 11 yard line. Andy Cole, who uh, playing that right cornerback, has been involved in a lot of tackles so far today from Muir High in Pasadena, which also has produced some pretty good players through the years like Anthony Miller and Ricky Irvins and a basketball player by the name of Stacy Ogman yep. and former UCLA great Jackie Robinson. Great tradition at that high school. It's pretty tough to get your jersey retired. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> now Kaufman has come out. Kaufman has come out of the game. Over 220 yards rushing today. The clock running with just over four minutes to go. And second and nine. And Neal has it. A lot of blockers out in front. Neal, penalty marker, touchdown, Washington. Penalty markers down. I think this one's going to get called back, but it was nonetheless an outstanding run by Neal and a great block by Andrew Peterson, number 60, leading that play out on the outside. I think they're going to get Trevor Highfield, number 79, the left guard with a, with a holding penalty, but it was a great run by Neal. Watch on the left-hand side of your screen. Highfield, number 79, and number 60, Peterson are going to be leading the play. Highfield's going to get called for the hold right there on Donnie Edwards. No, he's, yeah, he's, that's the he's, hold. He's behind he's got that him. Left and he's, arm. Yeah, he's got that he's, big bear hug he's on. He's behind him. him and he's pushing him down. There's Highfield. I, I think it's almost a prerequisite for offensive linemen to have tattoos these days. You know, <laughs> I notice that a lot. Well, you have to have big arms in order to have those big tattoos. If you don't have a big arm, there's no point having a tattoo. To wrap all the way around, you can't read it. Got to have the big gun, and then you can put That's the nice right. tattoo on there. Second down and 21 after the penalty. Four minutes left to go. And timeout. Timeout called down to the field by Washington. The Huskies have a 10-point lead, and they have got the football. Well, that band just keeps on playing. They never stop here at Husky Stadium. Four minutes left to go. You gotta Huskies. make sure you're going in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, you gotta be ahead. Well, folks, there's the world's largest duck blind. They come flying over here. We saw them yesterday at practice. Husky Stadium. Second and 21 from the 22-yard line. Hewer, let it fly. Janowski, touchdown!
22-yard touchdown reception on the deflection. It looked like Teddy Lawrence got a piece of it. And for the second time today, Dave Janoski with the touchdown reception from Damon Hewer. Well, sometimes you got to be a little bit lucky in this game. Damon Heward's going to read the coverage right. He picks the right man, but the ball's a little bit too low. Teddy Lawrence is going to get a hand on the football. You can see right there, I take that back. Andy, Andy Colbert. Colbert, number 10, gets a hand on the football. But fortunately for Washington, the ball falls backwards into the arms of Janoski. And the point after is good. 3.54 left to go. The Huskies have moved it out to a 17-point lead. has been brought to you by the Optima True Grace Card from American Express. Slick 50 engine formula, the world's number one selling engine treatment. UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. And the beer that's colder, bolder, yet smooth as ice, Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. Roger Twavo, Todd Blackledge, Gary Reasons so with you at Husky Stadium where uh, Washington has simply dominated this yeah. game in the second half. Uh, they've had uh, time of possession, 20 minutes and 48 seconds to 5-12 for UCLA as the kickoff goes into the end zone. And the Bruins will have a first and 10 from the 20 with all three timeouts left. And uh, uh, Gary, are you doing a little work on that Napoleon Kaufman poster? Roger, I'm afraid I've had to. The big day the young man had here, I can't even add. He got to go for 200 plus yards here rushing. The big day, he has heart. He's got the hurt shoulder. He's out there playing. This number right here, 2,800 miles of the downtown athletic club, it's getting closer all the time. One number that he may be interested in that we don't have here right now is exactly what that means to him come draft day in yeah. April. Roger? Yeah, it means big. Just put a lot of zeros after a, a one or a two there, okay? Kaufman, 34 carries, 227 yards, both new career highs. Our first and ten, Cook was swinging out to the far side. Shaw trying to get to the sideline and does at the 22-yard line. So we gave you the numbers on Napoleon Kaufman, 34 carries, 227 yards. So the Heisman update, Terry Dean once again, the four touchdown passes. Kaufman, the 227 yards, both career highs and rushes and yards. Stenstrom, two, TT, uh, two touchdown passes today. Stewart not having a big day, but his team is winning. And Zaire and McNair both play later. Yeah, I would think this guy right here, Napoleon Kaufman, has to be considered the front runner right now in the in the Heisman race. On second and seven, Shaw with the pass incomplete. And if time permits, we want you to stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. That's coming up next, time permitting. You know, the Bruins uh, had a five-game Pac-10 uh, win streak coming into this game, dating back to 1992. That appears as though it will end. They're down by 17, 344 left to go. They have all three timeouts remaining. Pass throw downfield and the catch made there by Mike Wynn. Now they've ruled it no, and Wynn's upset about it, and so's Cook, as they go over and talk to the officials, but it's not going to do them any good. Well, UCLA has only had 95 yards in this second half. Again, a little bit short on the throw, and, and Wynn really should try to work back to the quarterback. You see him moving just kind of across the field. He doesn't work back to the quarterback. Look Boy, like I'll tell you, that did look good, didn't it? That one. Yeah, I think he had that catch. Fourth down and seven. Fourth and seven for the Bruins. Eludes trouble, now is hit, and incomplete. And the ball will go over to Washington. So the Huskies, who have not beaten UCLA at Husky Stadium since 1985, look like they have turned things around here finally in 1994. And they did it just the way they did last week against Miami, by totally taking control in the second half. 278 yards in the second half for Washington, only 95 for UCLA. 44 plays to 20 plays here in the second half now. Uh, just total domination in the second half by the Huskies. It talks, it speaks of great conditioning for Washington and just confidence in, in their ability to win games in the fourth quarter. And this gives uh, Jim Lambright a chance to get Ted Stark, his sophomore quarterback from Medford, Oregon, into the game on a first and 10 from the 23-yard line. Back there 
Cardinals, number 36, Mike Reed, a redshirt freshman from Tacoma. Mike Reed, and their start, number 13. Got a brother that's a pretty good tennis player. Jonathan yep. uh, won the French Open doubles title last summer. There's a look at Ted Stark. Also a punter, one of the backup punters on this Washington team. And so a chance for a lot of the uh, substitutes to play. I mean, the Huskies got about 100 guys suited up today. Yeah, they got, about, they got plenty of them. And Stark wants to throw it, walking it to Coleman in the end zone. Nearly intercepted. Back on the coverage was Teddy Lawrence. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned the numbers, and really, Washington, through the years, has had a great program of, of walk-ons on their football team, very similar to the Nebraska program. And, and when they went on probation, that has really been a saving thing for them because they, they were able to keep their numbers up because of their tradition of having walk-ons. Even though their scholarship numbers were reduced, they still had good numbers of, of players on, on their football team and still walking onto the program. So uh, you know, that is really going to help them survive this latest probation. Third down and six from the 19. for the Huskies, number one, Rasheen Shaheed. And timeout. Well, Donnie Edwards is, is still playing hard here. He's, he's had some problems against the option. This time, he's in position to make the play on the pitch. Now watch, he's going to try to make a big play. He's going to try to reach the ball out and take it for a touchdown. UCLA has used a timeout. They've got two remaining. Well, Damon Heward, after that great second-half performance uh, against Miami, struggled a bit in the first half, but in the second half, this uh, Washington team really picked it up. Maybe they're just a second-half football team. So. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you're not too far behind in the first half. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's great to be a good fourth-quarter football team, and they have shown that in a couple of weeks in a row. On fourth and five, start. He's got some room to run if he wants to. Now he's going to throw it to the Touchdown and a penalty marker down. Touchdown reception by Fred Coleman. They're going to have a lineman downfield for Washington. The play took too long to develop, and a nice job by Stark buying some time behind the line of scrimmage, but some of his linemen thought he was going to scramble. They were downfield trying to get a block, and this play is going to come back. Well, folks, before the official can make the call, Todd Blackledge <laughs> gives you the call. An eligible receiver downfield, five-yard penalty, and loss of down. Hey, the First guy was down. just trying to get a block to help out. You know, that's all he was trying to do. That's all he was doing. But see, it, you know, and originally there's a sense of timing kind of built into everybody's head. Well, when he starts to scramble, right there it looked like he was going to run. And you can see just, what? well, 68. And that's a loss of field. down, and the ball's turned over to UCLA. John DeSant. Backup right guard in there in the ball game. So the loss of down. Now they change. Okay. Now they they've changed that. The officials now have said no. It's going to be fourth down. Yeah. The officials originally said loss of down and. But look, look at Lambright going. Hey guys, come on, don't do this to me. So they're going to try field goal now. Washington will attempt a field goal. John Wales, who has made it from 47 and 22 and missed it from 47. John Wales has certainly showed a strong leg, but sooner or later, somebody's going to play him, and they're going to try to really put some pressure up the middle because he doesn't get a lot of trajectory on his kick. He kicks the ball very low, kicks it hard, and, and he's got a very strong leg, but that ball does not get off the ground very high when he does kick it. 39-yard attempt. And that's good. Well, Limebright was concerned that maybe they try to send somebody up the middle and block it because, as we saw with that kick, that doesn't get a lot of trajectory on it, but it had the distance. And Washington leads by 20. 
the school's main library here at the University of Washington. It's situated in Red Square, recognized by the red brick surface, which joins the old and new buildings on the campus. Todd, you remember the name of the library, don't you, Penn State? Yes, I do. Petit. Man, you didn't think I did. No, I, I didn't. I'd say that's an upset right there. That is a major upset. <laughs> Oh, hey, I think I checked about the book out once or twice. We're, we're in King County, Washington. The place kicker is named Wales. The punter is Prince. And we have majestic Mount Rainier out there in the clouds somewhere. A lot of royalty around this place. And they performed Elvis at halftime, <laughs> the uh, Washington band. So UCLA's got a couple of timeouts remaining. Three minutes left to go. And they trail by 20. And uh, I'll tell you, they're going to think about that uh, fourth down play yep. deep in Washington territory for a long time when they were trailing yep. by 10. They sure are. I mean, after they got the big, uh, the big call where they called the punter's knee down, they took over the ball. They got down into a fourth and inches situation. And you hate to, to really harp on a point, but Wayne Cook trying to call an audible on fourth and inches. The team was not in sync. They never really got, a, got the playoff effectively. Didn't really give themselves a chance to make that first down. Ryan Teen has checked in at quarterback. Sophomore from Simi Valley. And he'll run for it. And to the 29-yard line, gain of about nine yards. The tackle made by John Fiala. Well, this, uh, this is a good result for Washington after making that long trip to Miami. You figured that there had to be a bit of a letdown, and, and maybe there was a little bit in the first half, and just yeah. as far as making that long trip and coming back up here and, and uh, getting things going in, in conference. But uh, I'll tell you, the second half, they came out and they were with a big day. And reception made by Jordan, and the tackle at the 41-yard line, and Heward, after throwing a couple of early interceptions, got it back together again. Well, the Pac-10 today, uh, Oregon State and Arizona will be playing later tonight. Notre Dame beat Stanford 34-15. The final, Tennessee has beaten Washington State 10-9. Oregon and USC just underway. Cal clobbered San Jose State 55 to nothing, and we'll see Cal and UCLA uh, next week in Arizona State idle today. Washington uh, plays uh, San Jose State next week, so... That bodes well as Fiend is flushed out of the pocket again and dropped at the 41-yard line. Richie Chambers still in there. And Chambers with his second sack of the day as the clock uh, runs down to 1.54 and a timeout being called now. So after this. A lot of excitement here just a moment ago at Husky Stadium because Ryan Fiend was tackled from behind, fumbled the football, and Scott Greenlaw picked it up and took it into the end zone for yet another Washington touchdown. Well, it doesn't matter who's in the game for Washington. The, the attack is still the same. Attack the quarterback, put pressure on the quarterback. The ball is knocked loose, and Greenlaw picks it up on the fly and takes it to the end zone for another Husky score. And the point after is good. Ivalika was the man that knocked the ball away. So with 142 left to go, the Huskies have moved it out to a 37 to 10 lead over the Bruins of UCLA. You see Jim Lambright down there smiling on the sideline. Those, you know, he loves to see his defense score a touchdown. I mean, <laughs> he's a defensive guy through and through, and. Uh, that just warms his heart. You know, he was concerned about his team coming back from Miami, as you mentioned, that just getting their legs back in practice. I mean, that was a draining game emotionally and physically when they went down there and won in the Orange Bowl. And he said it, it was tough Tuesday through Wednesday just even getting their practice back, but they practiced well Wednesday. They had a good, very light walkthrough on Thursday, and uh, by the time Friday came around, these guys were ready to play football again. But uh, that's a long trip and a very draining game, uh, but they responded well and, and, and came back ready to play, particularly as you said in the second half here against UCLA. Well, the last time the Bruins came up here to Husky Stadium, this is just the second game of the 90s. Washington was ranked number two in the country, and UCLA upset them 25-22. So a lot of years of frustration 
build up since the last time Washington had beaten UCLA here in 1985 the last time as the kickoff line drive kick uh, go down into the end zone McElroy cannot come up with it and UCLA will take it first and 10 at the 20 yard line with 142 left to go. Well, this has got to be particularly uh, demoralizing for uh, Terry Donahue and his team because uh, they hung pretty tough in the first half, and uh, they came back in that second half, got a break on that punt call uh, where they said yeah. the uh, uh, the punter, uh, Prince, was down, and then that uh, fourth and inches looked like maybe they could punch it in, pull within three. and Yeah. Yeah, it was a 10-point game, and really uh, the game was still very much in question at that point when they got to that fourth and inches play. But since that point, it's been all downhill and all Washington, and, and really folks will look at this final score and say, well, the Huskies must have blown them out early, but it really was, uh, the game was in question for a pretty good amount. Ryan Fien, the quarterback, toughest situation in sports, being a backup quarterback. Knowing that you're going to throw the football and you just have guys teeing off on you. How many times were you in that situation? I was in it huh? plenty of times. You know, it is a tough situation, but it's also a great situation because you finally get a chance to actually play against someone else and in a game, and, and you can't replace that experience, can't learn it on the sidelines or in a classroom. Second down and 10. Bruins have one timeout remaining as Fiend will keep trying to throw the football. This play, he runs it. And it doesn't go for much. Carrying the football right there was Skip Hicks, who has seen limited action today. And I want to remind you that ABC's Monday Night Football will come your way at 9 Eastern 6. He will go back to the air, and Ayers, the intended receiver, he had a nice game. Derek Ayers uh, caught a touchdown pass, uh, caught another pass for some good yardage over on the uh, far side of the field in the first half. And that'll stop the clock. 105 left on a fourth down and eight. And UCLA says, well, we'll just punt it out of here. Get this thing over with. Get back to L.A. and try to regroup next week because they have to go to Berkeley to take on Cal. Cal seems to be turning their season around. They started out slowly. They've got a lot of talented players. Good quarterback, Dave Barr. And big win for them today trying to get... Back in the heat of the heat of things in the Pac-10. Coleman takes the punt from Shager and gets it up to the 42-yard line. Less than a minute to go here from Husky Stadium in Seattle. Big day for Napoleon Kaufman as his uh, march for the Heisman continues. 34 carries, 227 yards, one touchdown. The uh, carries and yards both career highs, and it's impressive that he has done this now. 211 against Ohio State, 227 against UCLA. He is doing it this in his senior year. He is a marked man. He's deceivingly strong. He really is. He's a, he's a very durable, very strong running back to go along with the great speed and the instinctive cutting ability that he has. And he'll just hand it off. And Reed gets a, a yard or two, and they'll just let the uh, clock run on down. So... UCLA's record will now fall to 2 and 3 and 0 oh and 2 in the conference. Now, Washington, of course, is on a uh, Pacific 10 Conference uh, bowl imposed sanction this year. They, uh, at this time, are not eligible. However, there is some, uh, there is a lawsuit pending, and, and uh, uh, depositions will be heard this month, and, and the case might go to court. It's been brought by uh, four of the uh, football players and Russell Harrison is the lead plaintiff in it to see if maybe they can get that that sanction lifted uh, or pushed back so that they can't play in a bowl game and that will be heard as the clock runs down and the Washington Huskies will move it to three and one and one and one in conference as Washington behind Napoleon Kaufman defeat the UCLA Bruins 37-10 the final and their first win over UCLA here at Husky Stadium since 1985. Jim Lambright was 7-4 and four in his first season last year. That was the most wins that a first-year coach ever had at the University of Washington and certainly off to a good start. You know, they probably could be undefeated very easily in this uh, this season so far. USC, they turned the ball over five times and uh, but still had a chance to win the ball game. Well, the genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Donnie Edwards of UCLA. He had seven tackles, one sack, and one interception. 
And then the big numbers by Napoleon Kaufman, 34 carries, 227 yards, and a touchdown. Those are our Chevrolet players of the game, and Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Well, Texas and Colorado are tied at 31 in the fourth quarter. Dawson has kicked three field goals, and Morenz has hit Pinckney for a couple of touchdown passes. And remember the big run? They put Conwell, the tight end, they split him out wide to the right, and Kaufman went out that way and got the block from Conwell, and then it was one man to beat, which was Teddy Lawrence. They finally caught him at the one-yard line, and Washington got a field goal out of it. For Gary Reasons and Todd Blackledge, I'm Roger Twibel. Thanks for being with us from Seattle. Washington beats UCLA 37-10.